right, good evening. Welcome. I'm going to call this meeting of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board to order. It is September 20th. We're starting around 7 p.m. Uh, my name is Kate McCarthy. I'm the chair of the Development Review Board. And next what I'll do is I'll interview, introduce the other members. To my right, we have... Kevin O'Connell. Thanks, Kevin. And then I'll read through the names of the folks on the screen so you know who's who. Um, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Abby? Thanks, Abby. Claire? Hi, this is Claire Roth. Thanks, Claire. Uh, Catherine? Hi there, Catherine Burgess. Thanks, Catherine. And Rob? Hi, everybody. Rob Goodwin. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, what we will do next is I will turn to Meredith to review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen. This is largely for people. Uh, oh, could you sign in at the sign in sheet? That would be great. Thank you. Um, the share screen is largely for people who might be watching via Orca Media and need to want to sign in. Um, but if everybody else who's on remotely and hasn't attended remotely before um, can listen. That would be great because this will give you some pointers on how we handle these hybrid meetings right now. Um, for those of you viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's meeting via the Zoom platform by using this link here on your screen. Alternatively, you can call in at this number and use this meeting ID to sign in. Um, if anyone has problems accessing the meeting, please email me. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. For those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. Um, I'm just going to take a quick peek and make sure we don't have anybody. No, nope, everybody's on Zoom. Nobody's calling in. Um, Please note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or a comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand. This is for those in the room as well. Um, and you know, if you're on Zoom, you can do that physically if we can see you, or there's a raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and then wait until the chair has called on you to speak. Um, and for everybody involved, once the chair has recognized someone to participate, um, someone who's a member of the public versus an applicant, um, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. And we ask that anyone commenting, please keep initial comments to about two minutes. Um, you know, the chair can definitely give you more time than that if needed. Note that because we have um, publicized this, noticed this as a way, as a meeting that can be accessed remotely, if I get notice via e my email that there's a member of the public who cannot get in and I work with them and they still can't get in, um, the meeting will have to be continued to a time and place certain. Um, and for people who are here in person, um, applicants, we ask that you go to the center table and sit in front of the um, tablet or the, the computer and use that microphone there to speak. If you're a member of the public uh, on a butter or something like that and you have comments on a project, we're going to ask that you use the stand-up microphone. Um, and for all the microphones, please make sure you're close to the microphone, both so that people who are watching remotely right now can hear, but also so that our recording secretary can hear you clearly when she takes down the minutes after the meeting. All right, I'm going to now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Very good. So in the, in the category of um, precautionary meetings and processes. I want to just check. I, I think that to ensure social distancing, what we could do is open up those dividers toward yeah. the back so yeah, that people, people can set up to, chairs. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to. If you if you care to sit, but okay. Oh, okay. Well, All I right. Can also, I can also just open those. That way yeah, that helpful. way if anyone else comes. Um, yeah. Standing in the door is allowed. I want everyone to be comfortable, but also don't want anyone to not come in of space thanks good well meredith is kind enough to to do that and muscle that open um okay. what i would like to do next is um approve the agenda is there an, a motion to approve the agenda as printed so so moved there's a motion by kevin is there a second 
Second by Rob. I will call the roll. Abby? Yes. Claire? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Rob? Yes. And I also vote yes. We have approved the agenda. Thank you. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is comments from the chair. And um, as I've done the past three meetings, I just want to thank you all in advance for your patience. We're continuing to adjust to this hybrid format. So we've done it a few times, but you know we've been doing this for 18 months and we're still adjusting in a lot of ways. So thanks everybody for being um, flexible and thanks especially to staff, Orca Media staff who are making this possible. And thanks to everyone who's, who's participating. All right. Um, we'll move on next to item six on the agenda, which is the minutes of September 7th, 2021. And in attendance were myself, Kevin, Rob, Abby, and Catherine. So we do have enough people to vote on the minutes. Um, are there any changes to the minutes as printed? No? Okay. If there are no changes, I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Rob? Second. Second by Kevin. I'll call the roll. Abby? Yes. Claire? Uh, she wasn't here. She Claire was not here. Vote on the that's, that's a good idea, Claire. Thank you. Um, Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Catherine? And I vote yes as well. Thank you. We've approved the minutes of September 7th. And I, I didn't mention earlier, but we do all the votes by roll because we're in this hybrid format. Oops. Keep it, keep it clean. Great. All right. We're going to move on to our first item of business, which is 101 Northfield Street. And what we're doing is a sketch plan review of a two lot subdivision. So um, before you come to the table, I'll, I'll just explain for anyone who's um, anyone who's part of this process what a sketch plan review is. So this is an early stage in the subdivision process and it's a chance for a future applicant to come before the board and kind of get a weather report on the application is often how we refer to it, get a sense of things. Uh, it's a chance for the board to get a sense of the proposal, to ask questions or make comments that will help the applicant understand the standards and to provide a complete application when they come in for the actual hearing. So what we're doing today for this is not a hearing. We're not taking evidence. We're having a conversation and learning. Um, it's also a chance for people who are curious about the project, whether it's neighbors or anyone else, to learn what it involves. So um, our, the project before us, when we're looking at a subdivision proposal, is to make sure that any lot that we approve will be developable in the future in some fashion even though if the, even those, those specifics will be determined later. So that means that today we aren't really talking about specific future proposals, what might get built there. We are talking about the parcel itself and there will be subsequent conversations or hearings about anything that is proposed on the parcel where people can get involved and comment. All right, so that's just a little bit about what we are and aren't doing with um, sketch plan review of a two lot subdivision here. So um, if the applicants would like to come and have a seat at the table. There you go, perfect. Um, uh, I have my, you know, engineer on the, you know, uh, on the WebEx, you know. Oh, okay, is your engineer is John? John. Okay, acknowledging John as well. And um, if at any point you want to turn to your engineer, you can say, I'll let John answer that question or. I think you will be the one who will be talking. To you. Okay. okay. Would you like to sit there anyway? Yeah, sure. I don't want to put you on the spot, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to feel excluded either. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll lay out what we're going to do to review this project. First, we're going to hear an overview of the project from Meredith, and then we'll hear about the project from the applicant, and that can be you or it can be the engineer. Board members will then have a chance to ask some questions about it. And then other people who are interested in learning about this will have an opportunity to talk and ask questions, a couple minutes of comments. Um, and then the board will be able to ask follow-up questions. And from there, you will have a sense of um, our understanding of the project, things that need more clarity, 
and um, just a preliminary read on how it does or doesn't meet the standards. Okay? So that was a big introduction, but just want to kind of set the stage. And now Meredith. All right. Thank you, Kate. Um, so Kate sort of stole most of my thunder about describing what sketch plan is. That's often, you know, what my role would be. I think what I'm going to do is just, you know, give a teeny tiny summary because I think John um, would probably be able to talk more to this. But this is, as Kate said, this is a two lot subdivision. So there's a, a fairly large parcel up on Northfield Street. Um, Right now, it has the Econo Lodge on it. For anybody who's been in town for, for a long spell, there also used to be the Brown Derby Restaurant. And this proposal um, would carve off the land that used to have the Brown Derby Restaurant on it um, and create a new parcel out of that land um, that could be sold to someone else. Um, and when I went through and did the analysis under the applicable provisions, Really, it, th there aren't a lot of big questions. It, in my review, it seems to comply with just about everything. Um, there's a couple of places where the application maybe needs a little bit more clarity or there were some little, you know, small errors. Um, the only real question I highlighted in here was that we need to make sure, when, when you do a subdivision, you need to make sure that all of the parcels that are resulting are compliant with the regulations. You aren't creating a situation where one of the parcels no longer conforms to the requirements. Normally, that would be a dimensional requirement, um, but there is a question that I put in here to, that we need to make sure that the Econo Lodge parcel that's left has enough parking area for that use that's going on there. Um, because some of the land that's being carved off, even if it's not officially used as parking for the Econo Lodge, is like a graveled, it, it looks like a parking area. So we just need to make sure that what's left for the Econo Lodge um, provides enough room for all the parking that's required for all the different um, rooms that are in the Econo Lodge. And that's not something that has to be answered tonight. That can be answered in the final application. Um, but that was really the only, only little little flag, like a yellow flag. It's not even, you know, not even an orange or red flag um, that I found, but board members might have other questions. Very good. That's what I've got. Thanks. And I'm sorry, I didn't give you a chance to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Anil Kaste, uh, one of the owners of the Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. And I'll turn it over to John. To John. <laughs> if you could introduce yourself as well. Yes. Uh, my name is John Spagdis with the Wolf Engineering. Um, I'm an engineer for uh, Arnell. Sachdev, who is uh, present at the center table this evening. Uh, should I share my screen and, and put a plan up? Is that possible? Or? That's completely sure. possible. That would be great. Yes. Would that be helpful? Sure, go right ahead. see if I can get something useful up. <laughs> um, so it's probably the best thing to share is this right now, which is everybody seeing um, yeah. an ortho photo plan. So I wish it was a little bit clearer, and I don't know how well you can see this, but this is the entire parcel boundary, which is approximately five and a half acres or so. I think, I, I believe it's actually 5.7 acres. And this linear um, wing-shaped structure is the existing Econo Lodge um, motel, uh, which Arnell and Ed are continue yeah. operating yeah. on the parcel. And this, is, you, know, you can see the parcel extends quite a ways down okay. Northfield Street. Um, and then this is all quite steep slope area of the, uh, of the parcel, but over here is the area um, where the Brown Derby used to be, and the, um, the time of this ortho photo was somewhat unfortunately um, was, was taken when, uh, I believe it was Dubois Construction was using this as a, as a uh, staging yard for uh, work they were doing on Northfield Street, so you can see uh, piles of gravel and various materials 
materials. Um, you know, <clears throat> that's all been cleaned up now, and it's really just a, um, a level grass area here. And there is existing um, gravel or paved drive out in the back where there used to be another linear building up in here. Mm. Um, so, <coughs> at any rate, the the proposal before you is basically this subdivision line, this proposed subdivision line to um, separate off this 1.4 acres from the entire 5.7, leaving this uh, as the existing hotel with the existing parking um, in, in front and to the side. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Emil to help me out here, but it's my understanding there's something on the order of 42 or 43 rooms in the hotel. And um, I believe the count of spaces out here is roughly an equivalent to that, somewhere in the 41, 42 range. I have not gone through and done you know, a, a count of these and, and labeled the spaces. And that can come in the, um, you know, at, the, at, the ne at the next phase yep. um, to be certain that there is adequate parking for the hotel. Yeah, do you so, want to uh, clear? I, 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 with that, I'll stop and uh, ask Emil to uh, um, clarify the number of Thank rooms uh, in, the, uh, in the hotel. Yeah, uh, we have 42 rooms at the hotel. And we have almost 41 to 42 parking spots, uh, as existing parking spot, uh, which doesn't uh, go on the parking on the lot number one. That doesn't so go on. So that's strictly to the lot number two. Okay. So and those. I have a yeah. layout plan. Okay. That I can share with you. Thank you, John. Okay, that's great. It's a lot fun, you know. Thank you. Yeah. No, okay. Good. Great. So, um, for for folks who are oh, good. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes. So, uh, as is. I believe Anil said there was 42 rooms. 42 rooms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 42 rooms. Okay. And so, in, uh, I believe, Meredith, that it's um, the number of spaces required is 0.8 per uh, unit, mm -hmm. if, if that's correct. So that means um, that we're in about the right zone here. Yep. Yep, it's the point, point 0.8 per unit, and then there's a little leftover for office, so it looks like you're in the right zone. So we'll just need to, I'll just need to double, we'll just need to double check the numbers. Great. Uh, looks like Claire has a question. Yeah, go ahead, Claire. Hi, yeah, I was just looking at this on the sketch that's been provided and just uh, had a question about the access onto this property. It looks like, and, and maybe this is the point of just clarification. When I look at the ortho, it looks like there's two access points. And and I was just curious, based on that little sketch, is, is, the, is it envisioned that both of those would be utilized or you would just be utilizing that one where the pointer finger is? So Claire, your question is about what after the subdivision what will the access points be onto the lot with the econo lodge correct and i guess I, I guess i would just also then ask about the envisioned access point for the other lot also okay so i'll take the first stab at that so my understanding is that these are existing uh, access points and um, the applicant has no intention to make any changes to uh, to either to any to the existing access points or operation of the of the hotel intends to keep it operating uh, as it currently is. Uh, I see. Um, I know appears to be shaking his head in agreement on that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in, in, as far as the um, access for the um, the proposed subdivided lot, there is an existing um, access point. Here onto Derby Drive, mm -hmm. and there is existing ac access. Um, I think actually, it's 
there is not an access point here. Mm -hmm. But, but um, you know, it, it's my understanding that um, and Anil's intention is not to develop the parcel in, in, in any way, but simply to make it available for sale and um, not to uh, preclude or um, predispose that um, the potential future development of that lot to um, you know, shoehorn them into any particular um, means of egress or access to the, to the lot, seeing that we don't know what they uh, potentially would do to develop it in the mm -hmm. future and we'll leave it up to them as part of what any applicant that application that they might make in the future to um, propose uh, how to access the lot and do it within the um, development regulations enact enacted at the time. Okay. So I guess um, it would be our job to make sure that legal access points can be added either on Derby Drive or on Northfield Street. Um, yeah, I mean, there is one on Derby Drive. So, there is, so there they, is yeah, there, okay. there's a legal access point on Derby Drive. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, there's a curb cut there. So there's already an access point. Whether or not that's sufficient mm -hmm. for future development will depend on what that development is. Okay. All right. Yep. So. No, no, I was just, I was just going to say there's, of course, there's an elevation change mm -hmm. on that lot. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is the what is the difference between the upper lot and the lower lot height-wise? John, if you know about that. Uh, um, you mean like with the elevation? Yes. Yeah. From yeah. The what's the existing access point right. there? To here <coughs> well, I mean, it makes it make, makes a difference with regard to access, obviously. Sure. Uh, it does. Uh, and <coughs> I don't have a, an exact number for you um, at this point. But it, I, I believe it's, you know, roughly a, a story. So it's much. Yeah. So 15 feet. It's roughly 20 feet. Uh, 8 to 10 feet higher at this location than it is, say, you know, out near the intersection with Northfield Street. Okay. That's useful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Claire, do you still have your hand up or is that left, is that left over or a new hand? Huh? That's left over. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Are there um, are there other questions from from DRB members? Um, yeah. I mean, I just had uh, you know one question, and uh, as you finalize the survey, you know, go forward. I think it might make sense to sort of like consider um, the boundary lines of um, Derby Drive and um, you know Northfield Street. You know, I, I think that. You know, at some point, the set's going to be developed, and you know, setbacks are going to be <laughs> um, sort of determined off of probably the, the boundary lines that are, you know, shown on this subdivision plan. Mm. Um, you know, and, and it seems like right now, you, you know, the scope of the survey didn't really include much work into sort of figuring out where those were. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I, I just can't say right now, given what would be exactly required by this board for the scope of that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we just maybe had a suggestion there that uh, maybe that get looked into or the, the note get revised on the current plan as to sort of like, you know, what effort was made on, on, that, on that part. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rob. That's that's very relevant. We've, um, we've had a number of um, proposals that have come before us for development where it's been a little uncertain where the boundary line is, and then that really affects where the person can put the building on the parcel. and it really saves a lot of back and forth for the future developer when there's a, a solid survey. Is, am I elaborating appropriately there, Rob? Absolutely, yes. I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I just looked at it and, you know, it, it, there may be not much information on those roads at all. Right. Um, but um, I don't know, I just read the plan and it seemed like um, that maybe that, um, you know, because of the subdivision determination of those boundaries at this point uh, was not, um, you know, in the scope. Um, and, um, yeah, so okay. you, you summarize it well, Kate. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Rob. And Abby, do you have your hand up? You can go right ahead. Uh, yes, I do. So I'm just curious if um, overflow parking has ever been needed on this this uh, smaller lot, if, if there's been instance where that has been needed. Uh, 
never. Okay. Thank you. You will. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, other questions from board members? All right. Um, John, if you wouldn't mind um, stopping the screen share, we can always come back to it if we need to. But I just want to sort of try to see people. All right, great. So um, at this point, um, I want to open it up to folks who may be here with questions of their own as neighbors. Um, I, I know that we have Emma in attendance, and I don't know if Bethany is here to, to be heard on this, on this application. But um, if folks would like to ask questions or make comments um, on this application who are not the applicant, could you sort of give me a sign? Yes. Yeah, that's Emma. There you go, Emma. Um, you are welcome to speak now. There we go. <laughs> there you go. You're unmuted. That's all right. Um, <laughs> um, hi. So uh, my name is Emma Zavez. I live at 3 Derby Drive, uh, which is an abutting parcel. Um, I did reach out to Kate McCarthy and Meredith because I did not receive notice um, of the application. Um, I have been the homeowner here paying taxes with my deed on file, paying my water and sewer bill, etc. everything with the city of Montclair for more than a year now. Um, so if I wasn't notified, I am wondering also if other abutting properties were not notified. Um, and I will follow up with Meredith, but I would encourage, generally speaking, the committee to look into the notification practices because I am clearly the owner of this parcel and the city of Montpelier has my information everywhere um, for this parcel. So um, unless this is a unique situation, it seems like there is a, a process problem okay. um, with that. So Thank you, um, beyond that, um, speaking to the subdivision, um, I did take a, uh, a little bit of time over this weekend uh, when I found out about the project. I do see that the parcel, the proposed <coughs> parcel number two, is surrounded on three sides by the residential 9000 zoning district. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up at this meeting to sort of ask the DRB to what extent that should have an impact on either subdivision or future parcel development, given that this parcel would basically be like an island surrounded by residential 9000. Mm -hmm. um, in the analysis, I only saw an analysis based on the um, the actual district that the parcel lies within. Mm -hmm. But um, based on the driveway access or the remaining dri single driveway access, of course, that I'm sure that could change for a future development. But if the intention is for the driveway access to be exiting onto Derby Drive, it's exiting into the n residential 9000 zoning district. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to bring that up in hopes that the DRB will be considering the subdivision and future proposals in light of the fact that um, this is the residential 9000 zoning district. There is a neighborhood of small uh, family homes surrounding <laughs> the parcel. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that the quality and character um, of the residential 9000 district will to some extent have an impact on subdivision and future development of the parcel. I don't mean to suggest that it shouldn't be subdivided or it shouldn't be developed, etc. I just want to bring that to the attention of the board. Um, and so when they are considering setbacks and things like access and that type of thing, um, really thinking about, um, you know, Derby Drive and the character <laughs> of that uh, residential area versus the character of, you know, exiting onto Northfield Street, etc. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that's my main my main issue or of concern that I wanted to, to raise right now. Yeah. Thanks, Emma. Kevin? Thank you. Yeah, I just, uh, this is a question for Meredith. Meredith, in the mixed-use residential, what's the density that's allowed? Density? Um, yeah, I mean, so how many per yep. square feet? Yep. So mixed-use residential, um, density is one dwelling unit per each 1,500 square feet okay. of parcel area. Um, and then in you know, Res 9, it's one per 9,000. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. I mean, it's, it's significantly more dense. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Six times, but y- you know, mm-hmm. it's. How big is this lot? Is the subdivided lot again? It's about 1.5 acre. 1.5 yeah. acres, so roughly, uh, I don't know, so that's 75,000 mm-hmm. square feet. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you could put. You could put some housing there. You could put some housing yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You could put some housing there. I mean, it's. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think um, one of the things that Emma is raising is, you know, we're, we're talking about a transitional area of the community going from this. 3,000 square foot minimum square foot lot size to a 9,000 minimum square foot lot size. And what does it mean to assess the compatibility of of different uses considering it's in that kind of in between or transitional zone. So what what I would say is that in the subdivision process, it's hard to that we're really looking at the parcel lines. And so it's hard to assess the character of those parcel lines as, as eager as we all are to kind of know what's next for certain. In When something is proposed in this area, I don't have the use table in front of me, but um, it's for the benefit of everybody listening. There are a number of different kinds of um, review processes that they could go through. One of those processes is um, an administrative review process, which is where the project would be permitted by our administrative officer, Meredith. Um, and in those cases, people are notified, abutters are notified, right, for an uh, administrative uh, not, permit? Not, 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 not directly, no. For an administrative permit, mm-hmm. um, the permit permittee comes in, they get their application, we issue the permit, and the permit holder posts a notice of permit on their parcel, and that, that's the start of the 15 day appeal period. So okay. there is no, no direct notice to abutters for an administrative okay. permit because those are things that are all just allowed without conditions mm-hmm. um, on a parcel. Okay. It, 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 so it, that's, it, that's the big red Z as it's affectionately known. If uh, there were something, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no the big P, red, it's a P it's a, it's just, it's a blue, <laughs> it's a blue card. Oh goodness. The red Z is when there's going to be a hearing on something that that gets posted 30 days before the hearing and what's the situation for sketch plan which is really an informal Um, process so technically for sketch plan there's no requirement that we notify abutters but we do it anyway right um and i know emma didn't get that notice um and i think that's more of an issue of how part part of it is an issue with our envelope issuance um there I, I i did check back on this emma um and there was an issue where there were multiple databases in use and not every database got updated appropriately um but the the there was a notice sent to three derby drive and it had the old owner on it but it also had a or current owner mm-hmm. and for some reason it still got forwarded we think oh. even though it said or current owner um and so that's we've got to look at that process because we started putting that in place um because land has been transferring so rapidly recently but emma's case specifically was a a failure to properly update all databases appropriately and that's something that we've we've looked into already today and are working on so that hopefully that won't happen again yeah so sorry about that emma yeah, Meredith, thanks for that explanation. Emma, I, I want to apologize on behalf of the board for, for, for the miscommunication, and it sounds like um, it will be rectified for this area of town at the very least. Um, um, so uh, we talked a little about what an administrative permit review process might look like. Um, and then if there's something that is more involved that involves site plan review, that is a conditional use that would, uh, or that would trigger some other sort of um, Discretion, uh, yeah, discretionary. Discretionary standard like steep slopes disturbance. All of those would come before the board um, and go through this kind of quasi-judicial process. Um, I'm sorry that I can't say for sure what which of those processes would be triggered, um, but I guess I mention all those to give just kind of a sense. And there's yet another approach, which is that our zoning administrator is wonderfully responsive, and if you email her and say, "Is there anything going on?" I think that now and again that could be acceptable <laughs> yes now and again now and again um 
So are there other follow-up questions from um, either from Emma or from other, other neighbors who might be here or board members? Uh, Claire has her hand up. Claire, go ahead. I'm going to put my hand down right now so I'll remember. There we go. Okay. Um, there's been some discussion, I think, and, and I raised the, the question, and I think it kind of piggybacks on the, on the neighbor's inquiry about the, the access to that lot. I think, I think it'll be informative to better understand the kind of the parameters of the existing access onto Derby Drive and um, whether an access can be made onto Route 12. And I, I believe that if that, if that um, lot was to go through site plan, it would necessitate um, a Section 1111 permit for maybe sort of transportation on a state highway. So nope. It might still be a town highway. Nope. There. It's still, there's, there's, there's only one little stretch within the city of Montpelier that is technically a state highway, even though that's Route 12. And that's okay. over by access to the interstate. The city actually has jurisdiction over all the other okay. roads. Okay. Um, uh, but I think it would be helpful to help get some more information to understand if, if an access can be on, on Route 12 or if they are limited to the Derby Drive access and having that on the um, subdivision mm -hmm. um, plat. And, and I guess a um, clarification that the lot would not be utilizing any type of easement where they would cross onto the motel property and, and use one of those access points. I think having more clarity and information on that would be helpful. Yeah. I, I think those are good points of interest and I think we could talk a little bit more here tonight about the possibility of access onto Northfield Street. I feel like some of those further details about agreements between what would in the future be two property owners would need to be discussed when there are two property owners and when there's a specific use in, in mind. I, I don't know that we have it within our authority and the standards of the regulations to say that something should or shouldn't happen on the parcel in the subdivision process. But tell me if that's not what you meant. No, I think I think I, I agree that uh, we don't want to be kind of dictating or directing, you know, future uses as that is going to be kind of part of that process. But I think having information about the the current legal accesses um, would be would be helpful so that in the event of the site being developed, there weren't any kind of surprised by the future owner of, of, of now they're kind of restricted in their usage because of a the mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. component. Okay. I think that would certainly be advisable for anyone who wants to make a marketable parcel to someone to, to have those pieces of information handy. Um, whether or not they go on the site plan, I think is a different, a different question. But wh what if we talk a little bit now about um, access onto Northfield Street. Is this something you've analyzed in the driveway distancing criteria, um, I, Meredith? I, I didn't analyze this in here. I think I, I, I think that if um, for the final application, it, you know, to for the, the short answer would be for John to look, and you could run it by me, whether or not there is a point on the frontage of Northfield Street for this new parcel where a driveway could be put that's compliant with the spacing requirements and you know if there isn't it could also be a you know here's a potential spot and then i could always run it by dpw to see if it's something that they would support i, I think that's that's as far as i would think we would need to go since the parcel does currently have a legal access point that's already been approved previously um even if it's not compliant with current standards that that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, do other board members want to remark on this? Okay. Emma, um, I saw you had your yellow hand up, and then the yellow hands down. Would, uh, did you want to chime in again? Yeah, I just wanted to. I mean, I, I might have already said this in so many words, but I guess I I just want to emphasize that you know, uh, like a few 
few cars coming in out of in and out of the Derby access point is probably would not be a big deal and would be in character with the residential nature of the neighborhood. Um, but if you were talking about like 40 parking spaces, probably won't be that many uh, based on the standards I looked at. But if you're thinking of like thinking about developing the parcel in a way that there is going to be more traffic than a regular neighborhood would have, then Northfield Street is by far the more appropriate street to be having lots of traffic flow um, versus dumping excessive amounts of traffic flow into a neighborhood where there are pets and kids and people walking and small houses, etc. So I don't know to what extent, um, yeah, to what extent you guys can, I don't know, <laughs> formulate opinions or, or suggestions about access, etc. but in terms of subdividing and future proposals, um, I guess I just want to make the point that access to Austin North Hill Street, if there is potential for high traffic flow, mm -hmm. would be much more appropriate. Okay. Um, probably character, I would Thanks, Emma. You know, um, because we don't have a use or traffic volume, it's not something we'll be able to address with the subdivision. But I think one of the things I actually really like about sketch plan review is that it's it's just a chance to have a conversation. So this is all now kind of out there as part of the discussion. It's communication between neighbors, and that in and of itself is, is useful, even if it doesn't get folded into this decision uh, when and if the application comes before us. Because I'm remembering we're not making a decision on this tonight. Um, but so thanks for that, Emma. Um, any other comments? <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, looking more at this, I'd like to elaborate on what Claire said and looking at it, I think that as this comes to final, um, there is a decision by the applicant that has to be made. I mean, right now we have access on the draft plan to be, you know, submitted and access going off of Route 12 over the parcel boundary onto the parcel. So either that is going to continue or it is, you know, not going conti to continue. And I don't know that, like, the board has any, uh, you know, real, uh, you know, authority to say whether it's an under or it's done. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I do think is that it should be very clear on the plan whether it is or it isn't going to continue. Um, and, um, and and so I think that that maybe is the is the only clear guidance we maybe have going forward. Um, um, and obviously, you know, I think the rest of it is dependent on the use um, but that specific question of uh, you know, what is going to happen with the fact that you can currently pull a car into the Econo Lodge, cross this boundary line, and be on to propose lot two, mm -hmm. is that going to be happening after this subdivision is approved, or is it not? Mm -hmm. um, because there will be rights, or there will be not be rights. It should be okay. one or the other. Thank you, Rob. And that goes, uh, as you said, goes back to what Claire was saying about will there be an easement? Is that anticipated? So I think I understand better, Claire, what you what you were getting at. I'm sorry I didn't quite get it get it before, um, but that idea that you introduced is, was an important one, um, and is something the board would benefit from knowing a little more about. Yes, Meredith. Um, so just as a something to note to John and Anil that what it might be is that instead of having you know, for the final plan to have this ortho is useful for people, but it might be that the subdivision, the final subdivision plan, right, shows the boundaries. It isn't laid over the ortho. It shows your, you know, your current building spots and it shows the access points for the Econo Lodge and for, and, and it shows also your setback lines, right? Because your setback lines aren't going to be on the final plat that's recorded, but you want those setback lines on the subdivision plan for this development discussion, as well as the dimensions of the existing access point for the new parcel, the corner, corner parcel. And I think it's just maybe tweaking the presentation so that everybody has answers to these questions with a simple, you know, simple layout that doesn't have the complications of showing what isn't even gravel anymore. Because yeah. um, I think that's confusing things for people. Yep. Good. All right. Board members, anything else? Okay. That is our weather report. It gives you a sense of um, what's catching our attention and what the um, what others might have to say about it. Do you have any, any questions or anything you'd like us to clarify for you? I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks for taking the time. Thank um, thanks for being yep. here. Great. And um, until next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Are you all set too? Yes, I'm all set. Okay.
Okay. I uh, just would, um, I, I think it's, uh, it was very helpful. It was good information um, there. And uh, you know, I think that Dan Danielle and I will, uh, will talk and decide what is, you know, what is the best option for um, dealing with the driveway access issues and make sure that uh, the lot is um, most useful and, or you know and marketable and uh, you know look at the um, what the driveway spacing um, would be coming off of Northfield Street and um, whether or not there would be a shared access between the two lots or not. Okay. Um, and, and we'll clear clarify that on um, on the future proposal. Sounds great. I'll send you a copy of tonight's meeting minutes because you get that instead of a decision. Um, and then you can also feel free to run thoughts by me on access because I can also then coordinate with Department of Public Works and run things by them. And, and we can also have a, um, if we needed to, we can all have a, a Zoom meeting or a meeting with somebody from DPW with us all together so that you can tie that all together in a way that, that they feel comfortable with as well. Okay? Great. Okay. Thank awesome. you very much, folks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank well, thanks, everybody. We're going to move on now to our next um, application for this evening, our, our first application um, for Zero Ewing Street. So the applicants are welcome to come up to the table. We're talking about site plan review of a new three unit dwelling structure. Um, all right. So um, here's, here's where we're headed in discussing this. We're going to hear an overview of the project from Meredith. Well, first, I'll swear in anyone who wants to speak on this. Then we'll hear an overview of the project from Meredith. We'll hear from the applicant. Board members will have a chance to ask any questions um, about, the, about the project. We'll hear briefly from other people who might want to comment on the proposal. Um, the board may ask them questions. And then we're gonna, um, we're gonna walk through the application. Um, you know, a lot, I think, that, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through the, by application, I mean the staff report, which highlights some of the items that, um, that need a little more discussion and, and information. So I will start by swearing in anyone who wants to be heard on this matter. So if you think you might come up to the microphone, please go ahead and raise your right hand. Does that include us? That includes yes. you. Yes. <laughs> um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very good. So I'll turn to Meredith. Uh, Meredith first question. Do you, or are you able to put the site plan up? I can put that up, or you can on there. That's logged in via... Probably widget. better for you. Okay, I can do that. And <laughs> do you guys have a printed copy of the staff report? We do. Okay. Uh, does anybody here need a printed copy of the staff report? Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it over on the side table oh. in case anyone wants to. Yeah, in case reference we get it. going. Yeah. Uh, and there's, sorry, the, for some reason the application is actually stapled on the bottom. I don't know how that happened, but. Okay. You're off. All right, um, so this is an application to put three dwelling units on a currently vacant parcel on Ewing Street. Um, it used to be part of a parcel that was the cor at the corner of North and Ewing Street, and it was subdivided off in the last couple of years. Um, uh, three dwelling units um, is, um, sorry, hold on one second, my brain is kind of crazy, um, is, is actually a permitted use. Um, but what we've got here, because it's a new, brand new principal building, and because it involves steep slopes, those were the two main triggers that sent this to the Development Review Board because administrative um, decisions can't, can't make those decisions. Um, so in the staff report, I mean, there's a lot of red those are things that are highlighted where the board either needs to make a determination or there's some questions that are unanswered. Just because it's red doesn't mean that it's a stopping point for the decision, just as a <laughs> item for people to be aware of. Um, 
at the back of my staff report is where I've sort of summarized the things that need to be decided. Um, and some of these things I've suggested some ways to deal with them. Doesn't mean that the board has to do it that way. Um, but the major, the major things that are going on here, and I'm not listing these in order of, of magnitude, it's just where they come up in the staff report mostly. And you're um, on page 19 there, Meredith? Yeah, so it's page 19 Thank of the you. staff report is where it starts, um, which, sorry, I don't know off the top of my head where it is in the packet, um, in okay. the full packet. That's okay. Uh, but it's like page 50 something, I think. That's okay. Um, so one item, and this isn't a really big situation, but the board does need to decide whether to approve a retaining wall that's more than six feet tall. That's something that the board has to make that decision. I suggest that in this case, because it is a retaining wall um, needed to hold back the bank, that it makes sense to make that approval. Um, the board will also need to review, sorry, I'm blocking my camera, um, review the design standards for development on steep slopes. Again, from my analysis, it looks like all of those design standards were complied with. Um, there's also, there seems to be a little bit of um, some information missing um, per comments from the Department of Public Works in the uh, erosion control plan. So that's something that could be easily dealt with with a condition of approval um, if the applicant hasn't updated that for tonight. Um, there's some questions about internal pedestrian walkway compliance and um, maybe some screening. So this is the, the screening for mechanical um, equipment or service areas. That's more of a question of there's some missing information. We don't have information on where those service areas like trash might be stored um, or what kind of mechanical equipment would be on the outside of the building. Um, we also need some information on outdoor lighting um, and also uh, just a, a little bit more um, information. Well, we don't need more information necessarily. Sorry. Uh, the board has to decide whether or not the um, solar access and shading requirements have been complied with. I think given the site, they have been, but it's a decision the board has to make. Um, and then there is a requirement in the regs about um, getting um, an energy certificate. It, it's, it's, it's sort of a minor checkbox item, but under the regulations, the way to do that is to require a certificate of compliance for the project as a whole. Um, it's just, it's what is in there for the regs as the way to check that and make sure that we get that document because it's something that's completed after the building is built. Um, it's not a certificate of compliance for something like this would require that the zoning administrator, me, does a site inspection um, when the building has been completed or at least is very, very close to completion, but before anybody moves into it. Um, and it used to be under the pre-2018 regulations that that was just, it, it happened with every project w that went through the DRB. There was always a certificate of compliance requirement. Now, there is only a certificate of compliance required if the board specifically lists it as a condition of approval of a, uh, of a permit, of an application. Um, so that's something that the board has to discuss and decide whether or not to put in. Um, those, are, those are the big, big questions um, or determinations that the board has to make. It seems like a lot, um, but I, I think the board can actually move through a lot of it fairly quickly based on the information that's in here. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Um, so now, now I'll turn to to you, the applicants. I think that's Don in there, and and you must be Gabriel. Yeah. All right. I'll please go right ahead. Oh, so you're gonna? Can you move the microphone to between you? If you're, you can, if you bring it back and around. Yeah. Because you're gonna need to speak right near the microphone. Yeah. I'll just introduce myself. I'm Gabriel Lajanas. Um, I'm the applicant, and uh, Don is the engineer. We're really excited to start working on some infill projects here. Yeah, and Meredith has been incredibly helpful as we're going back and forth and certainly we'll get you all the information you need. We think we have a lot of the answers for you now. So Great, great. thank you. Um, actually, if you could put up our slopes analysis plan. Will do. Please. Yep, give me one second. I've got to pull you a couple things. And I'll, I'll just go down those staff 
questions at the end and, and address those that we can. Sure. If that's appropriate. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like a good approach, Don. That, that, is, that, is that all right? I'll, I'll look to the other board members. Is that a good approach? Like, shall we hear from Don on those questions? I think this one is light enough that we can leave the lights on. The other picture we looked yeah, at was a little dark. Thanks. Um, <laughs> the only thing I can't see is. Um, I, can see. I, need, I can back up. It's just if I get smaller, it's hard to see those. Let me just, if you can go to the, that, whoops, right there. So, greater than 30. Okay. And then you can center it, please. That'd be fine. <laughs> um, the, the s actually, the photo on the front of your staff report is quite helpful. Um, the, the site's generally flat, but the rear um, drops up and is fairly steep, and it's only over 30%. And that's what triggered, you know, triggered your review. Um, the way we propose to address that is to use a. Uh, a uh, ready rock wall, um, similar to one that's next to the river, to the uh, just west of the Unitarian Church, sort of large concrete blocks that have a texture to them, so they look um, a little more organic, you'd say. Um, so there's a wall in the back that provides room for um, for parking and a turnaround. The building itself, only a small portion of it, is in the steeper slopes, and we've provided. A structural design for both by a um, engineer, by both for both the uh, the foundation of the what would be the southeast corner of the building, and then of course the retaining wall. Um, and and we believe the wall is up to eight and a quarter feet tall, so it. Um, but we think it's reasonable. It's stepped so that it matches the grades, um, but we think that having it that tall uh, makes sense for this for this site um, and as Gabe said I mean it's a it's an infill to add residential units here in the in the city which we think we share with the city as being important um, that sort of addresses number two with it on the steep slopes um, we have uh, prepared a, a erosion prevention and sediment control plan that uh, is part of the package um, uh, which addresses the erosion control issues. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's not a lot, there's not much drainage area there, so it's not sort of significant, but it, it's appropriate to, to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And mostly on, uh, mostly the, the thrust of that is to stabilize the site um, within seven to 14 days of, of uh, initial disturbance so that you aren't leaving it open as we've seen on other sites in, in, in town recently. Um, uh, for, I sort of missed that. Our suggestion is for the, to provide, it's a good, good catch from Meredith's point of view, is from the paved path, excuse me, the paved walk that goes out from the front mm -hmm. to the street, we would do a 90 degree path to the driveway so that um, residents would, or guests, would just come out the front door, take a, a 90 degree turn, and then the driveway would become the access. Mm -hmm. we, we could do a, a separate sidewalk along, along the, in the grass area, but we'd prefer to save that as grass and as trees. Um, and I think low density, it, 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 I don't see an issue with people walking down the driveway. The driveway's 18 feet wide, so there's plenty of room to, for both emergency vehicles and for people to, to get there. Mm -hmm. And will, will there be any um, entrances or exits on the west side of the building? No, it's all the, just the front. Okay. And there's a upstairs and basement. There's up and down. So okay. it's, a, it's split in that you go up a half a flight to the quote unquote first floor mm -hmm. and down a half a flight to the uh, basement. With three stories total? Or just the two that you just did with three total? Three. Okay, all right, thanks. I'm getting a little ahead here, but um, just was curious about um, how the entrance and exits related to the driveway. Thank you. 
So, okay, in terms of screening, there, the majority of the mechanical uh, systems will be in the building. Okay. Um, there will be, um, where we want to, well, there will be uh, a meter pack on the, probably the, the north east corner, and that can be uh, screened from the view from Ewing Street. And that'd be just a typical, probably a, a, a three, you know, three meter, meter pack. Um, what we'd like to do with, um, not to have a dumpster, but in the vicinity on sort of the, toward the rear of the building, there's room, there's room near the bike rack, sort of behind the, along the, next to the bike rack and uh, along the back of the building to put six typical totes that you'd use. We assume there'd be three for, uh, one for each unit, but three for waste and three for recycling. Um, and I think that addresses that. And we would not, since most of them can be behind the building, we wouldn't recommend any screening for that. We've got trees along that, that area anyway. That would break up the, the view. So I think that's a reasonable way to, to place those, a reasonable place. Um, Outdoor lighting, um, we may have misinterpreted that, that in the ordinance. Um, what we can say is one that we'll, we'll get a lighting plan by a, a lighting specialist, but obviously there'll be um, limited side mounted, uh, you know, down cast screen lights along primarily the, uh, the west side of the building although for security, we'll probably need some on both. Well, and the porch, there'll be lights underneath the porch, porch roof, and then some limited lights on both the east and the rear, uh, the south, just for, for security purposes. But all downturned and screened. Um, uh, I think we agree with, with uh, um, Meredith, the solar's, it's not a great place for for solar, unfortunately, um, but it, it, it's a flat roof, right? Yes. Yeah, so there is a potential to be able to put roof mounted units um, to get some solar gain. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, and it, you know, is, it is oriented north south, so you could get some that way. Mm -hmm. um, well, then the certificate of client compliance mm -hmm. would be related to the stretch code and that appropriately would be part of um, your issuance of a occupancy permit um, subject to your review. And I think that, let me see if there, um, at the moment the, the, there's a question about the driveway, we propose the driveway would be gravel at this point. We talked about the walk. Yeah, and it, the lighting, it, it, we would request that it, it, it be, uh, if the board approves it to do that, a condition of prior to the zoning, uh, a building permit be issued that uh, we provide a lighting plan that meets the, meets the standards. And I believe that hits all of the those questions that Meredith had brought up just in the process. Just, just a so, fundamental okay. yeah. fundamental question. Uh, the structure that I see here at the beginning of the uh, staff report that that's not being torn down. That's that's remaining, yeah. right? Oh no, that's the neighbor. That's the yep. neighbor. That's and the neighbor. That, that was okay. That was sub this parcel was subdivided away from that parcel. A year or so ago. That's right. I remember and, that. And that so, remains. So now we're now we're looking at the lot itself. Exactly. Just, okay. Very good. Thank you. All, uh, basically, that lawn would, would get converted to to uh, a building and parking. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thanks. Thanks for the um, clarification, Kevin. Yeah. Good. If I stop share at this point, Don. Okay. Good. So I'm gonna um, turn it over to board members now for for some any clarifying questions on what you've presented. So board members, over to you. Oh, I'm sorry. It goes the wrong way. There's 
stunned into silence. <laughs> <laughs> you had some thought, maybe unmuting. Yeah, I, I don't know. Could you just run through your landscaping and screening plan? I know that it was a it was a specific condition of the um, subdivision approval, so you could just be explained into the record. Your if Meredith could please put that up. We uh, have a landscape plan done by a superb landscape designer from here in Montpelier, who also happens to be my wife. <laughs> um, and basically a number of large trees, one in the front, and then several along the, uh, the west side, and then some lower uh, shrub, small trees in the front on both sides of the walk, and then some, again, sort of medium-sized trees along the um, eastern side that will break up the, the facade from, from the neighbors. Okay. And um, talking about landscaping reminds me to ask Meredith, we often include a condition that um, all planting shall be maintained in a viable and pretty condition or some, something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't even have to be an explicit condition anymore. It's just a requirement in that section of the regulations mm -hmm. that anything that is planted as part of compliance with the landscaping regulations has to be maintained and if it dies it needs to be replaced um, and if there's a change in in the type of planting that is there for for compliance with the regulation it needs to be run back through the the zoning office to see make sure it complies thanks Thanks for reminding me how we're doing that these days. Great. You're welcome. <laughs> Just maybe to clarify, it's, um, <coughs> we sort of, the, the smaller ones are, are boxwoods that'll be, you know, three feet tall. There's six of those, three feet wide. The next size up, what's called the HPs, three of those also, they're the, it's a hydrangea. There again, four feet tall, three to five feet wide. Um, then there's six uh, viburnum. And they they ultimately get um, 10 feet tall, eight to 10 feet wide. Mm -hmm. And this is at maturity. Mm -hmm. so they all start out small. <laughs> then we have three of the river birch, which were the ones along the uh, western side um, and there again, 10 to 15 tall, 12 feet wide. And then finally, we've got a, a sugar maple up in the front, which is 18 feet tall. And actually, it's a, it's a sugar time, it's a crab apple. Um, 18 to feet tall to 15 feet wide. Okay, thanks. Catherine, did you have a question? Go right ahead. Oh, yes, thank you. Thanks for talking through the landscaping plan. While we're on this topic, wanted to ask whether you had anything additional to share around stormwater management and runoff and the use of landscaping or permeable surfaces for that purpose? <coughs> There's planting beds under the bigger trees that'll, that'll um, and the grass will infiltrate some, but uh, because the need for parking and the access with the stormwater will generally flow um, north to south um, and be collected in the southwest corner of the, the parking lot, in that corner exactly, and then piped up to the city storm system on Ewing Street. So it, um, it's just the way the grades are because the, the slope, the site slopes slightly, not significantly, but slightly away from the, the road. Mm we're you know we're sort of bringing water backward and then bringing it up back up by pipe mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple comments from DPW and we'll take care of that in terms of the connections and the details but ultimately it goes to the city storm system as does or of course we're on city sewer and city water mm -hmm. all those utilities are in uh, in Ewing Street okay. thanks for that question any any follow-up Catherine yeah, yep. I think that answered my question. Thank you. Great, thanks. Because I just had one uh, 
One, one follow up. Uh, so, like, what type of grades do you have at the base of that um, retaining wall to you know, make sure there's no ponding mm. um, at the end of the driveway mm. before it goes into the catch, catch basin? Well, again, it it we have a slight grade there. It's paved, so or it's it's gravel, so it'll be we don't need much of a grade. But it slopes from the building itself, the building, the turnaround toward the southwest corner. So we have spot elevations there that, along the toe of the wall so that flow will go to that catch basin. Okay. All right. Can I, so I also have a question about um, the stormwater flowing from the adjacent property that's uphill and kind of how that interacts with the, the stormwater um, from the back of the property itself. I don't think we'll get much, but I think what will come, will, it'll flow um, along the eastern side of the building uh, to the south and then would end up in our system. It would flow along the front face of that wall around the corner of the building, the front face of the wall to our storm drain. It looks like there's a small, from the photograph, of like a small um, retaining wall there now, Is that, or just a... I don't, I don't know the proper term. Oh, there's a, is there any, well, there's a rock, there's a rock wall shown on the picture. Is that what you're yeah. talking about, Abby? That's got to be it. Hold on. Uh, yeah. yeah, there um, is. I'm talking about, uh, yeah, put, put oh. it back up for a second. Yeah, let's She's get right, there's an here. existing short rock wall along the yeah. eastern side. Yeah. So as you head up Ewing Street. And that, that'll remain. Yes, right there, exactly. That can remain. And okay, it, but, and that doesn't need to be reinforced or shored up or anything? I don't believe so. I mean, we're going to stay away from it. Um, hopefully not damage it in the process. I mean, there'll be some interruption with it with the plantings, just so we can get planting areas. But it's it's pretty small, so I don't think we need to to worry about its stability. Okay. And for those who are here with questions or concerns, I'm going to turn it over in just a couple minutes um, so we can continue talking about this uh, and anything else at that point, too. And but just a reminder that when you do have questions, the stand up mic, yeah. that way everybody can hear you. Yep. All right, so um, other questions from other board members? Okay, I, I have two that are coming to mind. Um, one is more like a note than a concern. Um, you mentioned six, uh, six wheelie bins, three for recycling, three for um, rubbish. And depending on the ownership structure of this building, it may be required for if there is a landlord for that person to provide composting. So as you're thinking ahead about the amount of space that needs to be taken up, composting may be a factor. Um, and then I had a question about the bike parking, which is whether it's covered bike parking or whether it's um, just out in the, in the elements. It's in the elements. Okay. Um, we aren't required to, or we, we, we're not likely to require covered bike parking, but as a enthusiast, I, I would share that people are much more likely to bike if they have safe covered parking. Um, but have it, having a bike rack is, is an excellent, excellent first step and I commend the inclusion of that. And the, um, really helps people bike if there's, if there's, shade from the element so just a note on that um, we have had people come and I am not sure on the full internal layout here but if there is any kind of like basement storage for other units in there or if the whole basement is all the one unit I don't know but sometimes that kind of internal storage for bikes or allowing that sometimes that's helpful mm -hmm. Thank you. you're welcome um, I, I guess it is worthwhile to ask, um, will there be any um, sheds or storage on the property or um, for people's um, toys? It's a pretty it is. We're making the best use of it we can. You are. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. All right. At this point, what I'd like to do is hear from folks who've um, got any questions or concerns. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I think I'd like to start, um, if she's available, with Bethany. If she would like to speak, and if, if yeah, uh, so, oh, sorry. They will need to be sworn in. 
Oh, we've sworn. Yep. Yeah, we did. We oh, swore. We swore. Yep. We, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bethany, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yep, Thanks she came on. Yeah, thank you. Thank, that's a good reminder. I do sometimes forget. Um, so, so what we'll do at this point um, to allow people to be heard is um, please take two or three minutes and share any questions or concerns that you have or anything else that you just want further clarification on um, with this project. And please identify your name and your address. So, Bethany, please go right ahead. Hi, my name is uh, Bethany Pombar. I live at 73 North Street. My property doesn't quite abut this, but uh, abuts the lot that it was subdivided from. Um, I actually was mostly just here to listen and hear about the plan a little bit more. My, my major concern right now is around um, drainage in that southwest, whatever corner that drain is in, um, as a, somebody who watches what the water does coming down off the hill. Um, it actually, I'm, I'm worried about it needing to be piped without a pump back up to a higher level level sewer and what pooling of water will happen in that corner um, if there's not the right, I, I'm not an engineer, so I do not know how water flows uphill, but I know it can. Uh, and so I think I'm, I am mostly concerned about the, the adequacy of that drainage system that's in place because when it's not, when there's bad drainage and when there's a lot of water we're seeing it cut down um, through the corner of those properties and create some erosion along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I think, yeah, the whole the whole lot becomes um, a, a parking lot or a building. It's a small lot. I'm all for increasing housing in Montpelier. I'm worried about the impact on the neighboring lot around plowing and what the snow removal will be um, if that driveway abuts their, the side of their property there. Um, I don't know, that doesn't seem to be a DRB uh, question maybe, but <laughs> a concern registered. Thank you. Um, and I think those are the two, the two things that really stand out for me um, right away. The other question that I have is around what kind of housing stock we want in Montpelier. And my uh, assumption from this plan is that each level is a condo. Um, and that means that we have a basement condo um, in here and it doesn't seem to have much much lighting. I'm just worried about, um, you know, what, who, who's, yeah, what kind of housing do we want in Montpelier? And that doesn't seem like the kind of housing that we're really striving for, um, even though we do need housing. Okay. So I don't know if there's more information about the layout of the condos and the, the units within the condos mm -hmm. um, and livability of those. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Bethany. So I hear I hear drainage, I hear plowing, and I hear um, a little bit more about how the basement condo works and what what its livability is like. And um, I think we're a small enough group that we can address those questions, and then we can go on to whoever else wants to talk. So uh, on the drainage, um, the ground slopes, but the pipe uh, the ground slopes up, the pipe slopes down. So by putting the the new catch basin out on the street obviously lower than the catch basin in the back property. We've got a 15 inch line, which is more than adequate for significant amounts of flow. So I don't see any issue with drainage, uh, both on the pr from the property and nearby. Okay. Snow. Don, Don, I'm sorry, can I just clarify? When you say catch basin, you're, I, when I think of storm water, I often think of the storm drain that we see at the surface of the road, but you're talking about a catch basin, which is like a concrete a cast concrete thing that's underground and that's how the pipe can go from the back of the property to the front Absolutely. but slope down right the, the the grate is merely the top of an entryway for the catch basin the catch basin is typically a four foot diameter concrete structure underneath uh, with a sump with a pipe exit in it mm -hmm. and with a sump underneath that pump so sediment larger particles um, settle out in the in the uh, catch basin and can be pumped out. So then that pipe goes forward and hits a, a deeper uh, storm drain up in uh, up in the uh, up on Elm, up on Ewing Street. Okay, great. So that means that there is not going to be a pump at the back of this property not that at needs all. to be maintained on rainy days to no. keep like a basement like we've experienced. Okay. Um, snow removal Thanks. is a good point. Um, what would typically happen here is that you would plow into the parking spaces and consume some of the space there. They're, they're 20, they're 18 foot parking spaces, so you can get some storage there, but ultimately um, snow will have to be removed and trucked off site, which 
um, is unfortunately typical of a of an urban compact site. Um, and then there are basement windows in the elevations that we provide. There are basement windows, so it's not. And as I said, it's sort of a split level. That part of the basements, the basement floor is above grade, mm -hmm. so there'll be windows. So natural light will come into that. Yeah, I can okay. share that for yeah, just well. a second so that Bethany can see those windows. Is this, is this, this will be the. Sorry. Done. This is this is about where the ceiling would be inside, right? For the basement. For the basement, and then there's and there's the windows here. And a window well. And a window well, so it catches more light. And this is the front, so you step, you go here and step down to get into the door. Yes. And then you've got. Sorry, I had to let it load a little. It's not liking me right now. Um, so you've got another window here. So that would and be the west side. Two windows to the rear. Yes. And that's the south, but it's near a hill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I would just say I, I think they're really cool little units. I mean, it's about a thousand square feet for a two bedroom, one bath. And I think it's exactly the kind of housing that we need. You know, we'll, we'll see the market will determine who, who lives there if that people like them or not. But, uh, I think it's going to be really a beautiful addition and character with the neighborhood. Okay. Thanks. And Beth Thanks for answering this. I, one more thing I'd love to just add, tack on. Sure. Uh, one, this question that I forgot. Um, thank you. Yeah. The, the, my other concern was about, um, and again, I don't know if there's anything that can be done about this, you know, development happens, uh, hillsides are disturbed, but there's a, a giant, two giant maples up mm -hmm. on that hill. Um, they're, they're, you know, predominant in the neighborhood uh, and very large and I'm actually worried about their root system that comes down that hill and um, what, um, what that means for the health of these aged elderly trees um, that are on that hillside. Okay. Is there any, anything that can be done, precautions that can be taken around that or is that just a potential Well, I, I don't know the two trees specifically, but if you look at our site plan, only a very portion, very small portion of the retaining wall associated with the parking interferes with any of the tree line. And my sense is that those trees are back on the hill and um, unless they're very close to the edge of the tree lines, they should be, they should be safe. Um, yeah, so Meredith's gonna pull that up for us on the shared screen in a sec, if folks will be able to see it. Um, while she's doing that, could you say, could you, I'm, I'm sorry, it's probably in the staff report, but can you give us a sense of the magnitude of disturbance on the over 30% slopes? I, I, I should disclose that I walked by the site today. Um, I live, I live right nearby, um, though not adjacent and, um, eyeballing it. I didn't go onto the property. I, eyeballing it from the, from the street. I couldn't quite tell how much there was, but I did see it. The corners staked out. I assume that was for the building footprint. Um, so it made me want to ask, what is the magnitude of impact on over over thirty um, percent? So which? Let me ask you one answer one question sure. first, and then. That's fair. So if you look right uh, to your left a little bit, right there, there's only a small portion of that. You see the tree line inside the uh, retaining wall, so it's yeah, it's less than five feet of the tree tree line. Now, of course, there'll be some disturbance behind that in order to build the wall. So. Uh, mm -hmm. There'll be a little bit more disturbance, but not significant in the tr in the tree line. Um, and then to answer your other question, if you could please put the slopes analysis plan on, we have the we've calculated the uh, the impact. Oh, you know what? There it is. Yeah, I want to go back to the tree the, oh. the tree question. It looks as if there sure. are two trees that are impacted in the in the property, and perhaps that's what um, Bethany's referring to. Uh, one that one and, one and that one. one? Oh yeah, yeah that that that's impacted. Yes. And then there's one actually. You're right. Way in the very back, those two will lose. Um, so those aren't the maples. I don't. Yeah, th those are. I think those are smaller trees. They're pretty small. Okay. Um, and then Kate, for your question. Mm -hmm. Right here, Don. This is what you wanted to show, yeah, right? I just can't read it. Yep. So it's 1,127.5 square feet is the area 
the, this is just to be impacted, right? Yes. Gone of of thirty percent or greater slopes. Mm -hmm. Um. And then you have a tiny bit of twenty five to twenty nine point nine nine percent slopes mm -hmm. under forty square feet. Um, same with the 20% to 24.99, that's mm -hmm. under 60 square feet. The majority of the project over 6,300 square feet is the basically, you know, 0.8% to 14.99% Great. 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 slopes. Thanks for zooming in on that just to help us all wrap our heads around it, especially me. Appreciate oh. it. And Claire has her hand raised. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Claire. Uh, yeah, I guess kind of I have a question about that kind of area on the site plan that we were looking at. But my question was in regard to parking, and um, looks like there's three parking spaces, and it looks like they're all going to have to to back out. No. Nope. And I was curious what that other area was for because it doesn't seem like a car could kind of reverse into there and then pull out forward. Uh, that's what we'd anticipate they would do. They would back into that hammerhead and then um, and then drive out. So there, there is enough room? There's enough room for you to pull in and then reverse that, that yep. 90 degrees and then pull out again? It Clearly the last person in is going to get the one on the eastern side and it may be uh, uh, four or five point turn instead of a three-point turn but it, it's doable mm -hmm. because that the the other I believe it's it's uh, that we've got about 15 feet in that the hammerhead mm -hmm. so it there's enough room to do it but the car the car that parks on the inside that they would have to kind of do some some fancy turning to kind of yes rear, pull reverse and get out forward right i i agree they they that's the least desirable parking space mm -hmm. um yeah. but then just my other question um i guess my comment was i, I think it's a it's a nicely designed building it looks um, architecturally and visually um, uh, very nice and, and kind of nice and characterful. I was curious just about uh, maybe this is more a, kind of a maintenance um, question. With the shedding off of that metal roof, it seems like all the snow would go directly on that area where the bike rack and the, the, the garbage totes are. Um, and so I guess just thinking kind of through kind of the, the, the maintenance and the snow plowing and, and getting all the snow out from those corners in that retaining wall. Um, I'm not sure if that's, you know, how much of that is kind of within our purview of our <laughs> um, regulations, but I think those are kind of maybe some maintenance um, areas that I think it would be um, helpful to kind of just clarify, maybe consider how maybe the the trash. I, I have a trash that sits on my side of my garage and it has a roof like that and it's a real pain to dig it out. Um, and so I guess I just wouldn't want to see that being an issue where now those totes are being pushed into the, the parking area because that area hasn't been um, cleared. Um, so I guess I'll just throw that out as kind of a consideration. I think it's a good point and yet you're, it's probably best that the, the waste containers and recycling be put more on the actual rear of the building where we don't have the roof, um, the mm -hmm. roof issue. Um, mm -hmm. But I think any, I mean, some of these projects you have to sort of live with and, and work with it. I mean, obviously you have to take care of the trash and you have to take care of the snow. So it, it will become, a, it, it's a maintenance item, but uh, part of yeah. a project. Yeah, yeah, but thanks for making note, Claire. So at, at this point, I, I want to make sure we get to other folks who are here to speak. Um, this has been a really good discussion, and I think it can serve to answer a lot of qu concerns, which is why I let it go on. But I would like to turn to the to the uh, person in the audience. Please come on up, introduce yourself and your address, and um, thanks for your patience. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dylan Woodrow. I live at 81 North Street, which is the abutting property just to the immediate west of zero Ewing um, and I just had a few questions about the design plans um, 
the ergonomics of the design and parking, and et cetera. Um, so if we could pull up um, the plans outlining the, I guess, just the, uh, the slope plan. And if you could scroll down to where it shows the access point of the driveways. Yes, thank you. Um, so if we're looking at where the curb cut is, um, there is a note and illustration indicating uh, convert to grass. This is uh, on my side of the driveway and that's gonna oh. cause... Um, oh, okay, there. Yeah, if you can see that there. Um, so that's gonna end up being burdensome to both me and my tenants. Um, mm -hmm. I do have uh, two, uh, three others that that live with me and pay pay rent mm -hmm. um, all young professionals uh, here in the community so I think that that is going to restrict access to the driveway for us as we turn in from uh, from the west side coming up Ewing from North Street okay. so I would ask that, that that be revised all right I'm just gonna get my bearings um, for you're pointing that out it says convert to grass um, at the access oh I see. okay I couldn't I didn't understand what you're saying oh Okay, so but that's currently it's um, currently it's an obtuse skirt at the curb cut, and this would narrow it to the point where it'd be difficult and burdensome for me and my tenants to access mm -hmm. the drive. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering. Sorry, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I know that Thank in the subdivision approval, mm -hmm. there was a there was a plan to narrow what was the then existing driveway on the North Street parcel. And that was a condition of the subdivision approval so that there was no more than a 24 width mm -hmm. foot width shared curb cut here. So, so you might need to go back. That may be pre-existing to the plot that you own. Sure. Rather than something that's been added on in their yeah. design Where here. Did Don, that convert to grass note on there, is that do you know where that is that something that was in the subdivision? I'm trying to plan? find that because we didn't. I know we were advised that we could only have 24 feet, um, and I'm not. I have the the uh, findings from the original subdivision. I don't. Yeah. Uh, no, I know it was a required 24. Uh, um, well, we can discuss this some here. If need be, I can run downstairs mm -hmm. to get a copy of the final I mean, subdivision plat from my files, yeah. if need be. We have but no desire to do any more improvements than we need to, So, but we were trying to trying to comply with the, uh, what was it, it's it, 2019 approval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll still look at it, maybe mm -hmm. ask another question. I, I'll. I'll try to find that answer. Yeah. Sure, thank you. Thanks for flagging it. Um, just continuing on with this uh, this point here, is there any room for the board to approve an exception to keep the width of the driveway as is, or or not include that that addition because that is going to be very burdensome for both me and my tenants. I feel like that would be a separate application. Um, or just, or, or we'd need to go, uh, um, it's a DPW well, it's, question. but not <laughs> if that convert to grass is, is something that is part of this application. It's actually, I didn't even notice that. I thought that was something from the underlying subdivision plat. So we need because to, because we can't approve something for his right. parcel. No. Right. Right. It's so if that's a change for your parcel, I missed that that was being proposed okay. for your parcel because you would have to have signed off on this right. application so that it sounds um, like one of the things we need to know if that is whether that's a existing note that was supposed to have been done no matter what or whether it got added on we in did, this conversation we yeah. so right. thank you because yeah. i i good point i missed that completely but it's on your yeah. parcel <laughs> yeah but it was a condition of when this was i don't know if you remember if you're part of that conversation but sure. when it was divided into two um sure. right before you bought it probably um, we looked at those driveways and wanted to make sure that it, it wasn't a great big wide driveway. Sure. 
Um, and I think that would have been one of the conditions of the subdivision permit. You yeah. Know, right. We yeah. We don't want it to be a huge parking lot. Yeah, um, exactly. But you know, it's my understanding that it's only initial. It's it's 12 feet of curb cut for each mm -hmm. um, as the yeah. shared mm -hmm. access point. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then it, uh, within that <coughs> section, it does state um, initial access to the drive. I think mm -hmm. that that's vague. And I was wondering if, if the board could provide a, a clearer definition as to what initial access to the drive means. How far uh, from the access point down the drive is that access point shared? Like how soon can you widen it? Can you open it up? Not again? how soon can, can it be widened, but how, you know, the the tenants of the this new development, how, how much access to that existing drive way mm -hmm. do they have? Mm -hmm. um. Does that make sense? So going from the curb cut uh, down the length of the drive, not width, but length. Oh, so how far back can they go? Correct. Into their oh. new driveway. Right, because part of the sub it said that in the subdivision, but it was, I, mm. I my yeah. attorney and I both found it vague, so we're lo yeah. looking for a clearer definition of about that. Yeah, fair. I'd have to look back at the subdivision decision, and I'd probably need Meredith's help to do that. Okay. Um, so I'm afraid I can't answer that um, right now. How and when can I, can I get more information on that? Um, they, may I interrupt the, the, uh, DB, yes. the, the findings, your decision of, of uh, 2019 uh, doesn't have a condition, but it says the Department of Public Works has requested the total curb cut width for shared access not exceed 24 feet. Mm -hmm. So that was what we were responding to. Um, but you're right, we don't want to do improvements on your parcel. Sure. Sure. Um, I, I believe what was prescribed or what was kind of detailed was that it would be uh, was that there would be an extension up Ewing Street of the drive. Um, I don't see that as necessary um, to the successful access of the entry point. Um, I think the problem was that the uh, unless there is an agreement between the owners of the two parcels, right? For for shared use, each individual driveway needed to be at least 12 feet wide on the different parcels, right? The curb cut has to be a max of 24 feet. Once you get into the parcel, the driveways could separate if need be, right? Um, but and this is this flows down from the Vermont transportation standards mm -hmm. that we've we've had discussions with um, about recently when we had to talk about separating driveways. Um, and, and so they're counted uh, uh, they're, it's counted as a shared driveway because there is they're either part of the same gravel surface or there is less than four feet between them. And really here this looks like it's considered to be a level surface is that right don that that this new driveway would be level with the one for 81 north street but, i mean there's a slight slope but yet yeah slight slope but, but it's not like there's a, a clear no, change in grade or everything no you they're currently connected and right and they're about they're probably 34 feet um you know the whole thing's about 34 feet right and so in order to meet the max of 24 <laughs> we were saying that the the neighbors have to reduce to 12 and then we get 12 it's basically mm -hmm. what it amounts to right and so I'm not um, sure how else you deal with that that was mm -hmm. i believe hold on one second i'm going to the conditions um So there wasn't an, an explicit condition of approval on it, but in the access analysis, and I will say to, to do this right, it might take us a little more time than scrolling through through yeah. this. It, it may be, um, it, it, yeah. but so I just want to give Meredith a little a little breathing room because she's diving right in. I think from our point of view, we, we, we um, 
maybe verbally, verbally amend our site plan to say that we'll have a 12-foot driveway um, starting at the upper side and we won't address the parts of that, are, that aren't on our property. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, we can't, I, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have probably drawn that in other than that we're trying to represent what DPW or what DPW had requested what the last permit had issued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I am feeling like I need to run downstairs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to talk about this issue. I don't know if we want to talk about other things first or take mm -hmm. a break while I do that or mm -hmm. what. Um, because I, I honestly, I don't know if I am confusing that permit with a different one where we had somebody come in and they actually provided an updated plan that said that they would be adding curbing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's... Would you, um, you want a copy of the, uh, that decision? Or? I have the decision yeah, yeah. right oh, here. Okay. I have it up, but I need to go downstairs because after that decision, before we issued the subdivision permit, okay. I almost think we might have gotten another document oh, I see. from the original property, from oh, okay. the property owner at the subdivision time. Okay. Are, okay. are, are we able to touch on a few other points? Yes. So um, what I'd like to do is sort of um, set this issue aside for now. Yeah. This is why we're doing this is for sure. to raise these issues. Sure. So this Thank is you. this all part of the process. Um, let's let's go through your other um, other thoughts and then we'll we'll take a break. Um, Meredith will see what she can find. If she can find it to resolve it, we'll do what we can. If she can't, we'll we'll take the time to get the additional information. But. Yeah, so um, please go ahead. Awesome, okay. So uh, my second point is, is around um, flooding and water collection. And uh, Don, thank you for providing a, a detailed explanation about um, uh, waterways and, and uh, ways of mitigating flooding. Um, that, that area does accumulate a lot of water, especially during the, the spring thaw um, and during big storms. That, that is the drainage for the hill that is Ewing Street um, and so that piece of land um, accumulates a lot of water and helps to uh, disperse it down into the groundwater mm -hmm. ways um, and then there's also a, an, an irrigation trench that, that has been dug um, by both myself and the owner uh, Mike Staub of uh, three Ewing, mm -hmm. and so that's that's been maintained uh, by myself and and the owner of three Ewing, um, and so I see this um, affecting that that drainage. So and I'm sorry, so the trench was installed on what property? On the property we're discussing? From three Ewing uh, across the the the, the property the that we're discussing mm -hmm. uh, at the base of the the steep slope. Mm -hmm. um, right at that joint between the base of the steep slope mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the lawn is a large swale that also hel helps to mitigate flooding. Okay. Um, my basement is, is primarily is, is dry 90% of the time mm -hmm. unless there is a lot of, of um, flooding and water mm -hmm. en entering the area. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done a lot to, to mitigate that. Okay. Um, and so I do want to make sure that, um, you know, I, I do, I run a business out of uh, that, is primarily the operations are all down there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't want to be in a situation where that's all mm -hmm. um, flooded out. Yeah. Okay. So I do want to make sure that there is adequate drainage for, um, and I think that the retaining wall will probably divert a lot of the water around and then down between uh, my property and, and Bethany's property. So that's a concern. Um, snow removal and uh, snow removal and storage. Um, I think based on this, it's going to be difficult to, to do, um, particularly with three vehicles in the in the proposed development. Um, I think that with the the sloped roof and the the vegetation plans underneath that sloped roof, that there will be significant damage to the vegetation with snowfall. And then um, as far as screening goes, I didn't see any screening uh, as it pertains to, to my side of the, the lot. Um, so I would like to see some screening uh, around the parking area. You mean landscaping? Uh, there's of, not uh, room like for landscaping. Plants to screen things? There's, 
or um, fences to screen. This is on the 81 north side. Correct. Right. Yeah. There's. There's. It would have to be a fence. There's no room to plant anything there and have okay. it actually be on. I see. The new parcel. That's right. Why you um, said screening instead of plants. Thank you. <laughs> screening. Yes. Yep. Just. Just something to. Um, you know, keep the parking areas separate and mm -hmm. and provide a little bit of privacy. Um, let's also look at the previous permit for that. Um, the, the previous permit to the development for the new parcel, which mm -hmm. right now is zero Ewing, um, needed to include the screening and landscaping proposal that would comply with that, that, that requirement under the subdivision mm -hmm. requirement because we didn't, you know, the, 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 we the didn't prior know. owner didn't know what was going to be done here. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm sorry, that, that falls on, on which landowner? Uh, so the, 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 the owner of Zero Ewing right now, um, because they're the ones coming forward with a development proposal, their screening and landscaping proposal needs to comply with uh, 3506, um, right, which is really goes to similar things as what's in the landscaping and screening proposal that that's here but it does say that um, it needs to uh, maintain and provide privacy for adjoining property owners in between parcels enhance the appearance of street frontages um, maintain or establish vegetated buffers along waterways and utilize green stormwater infrastructure practices. Those are the general standards. So this is part of the, um, sorry, uh, la, 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 design and layout of necessary improvements yep. section. 35. Um, right. And so that's, that is sort of a more general landscaping and screening standard. Mm -hmm. But we, the reason we impose that the subdivision standard is because maybe somebody could have come with just a two unit development that wouldn't go through DRB and wouldn't right. trigger site plan so but this is three units so it does trigger yeah. site plan so we have the very specific landscaping and screening yeah, standards sure okay. sure so it's so they're, they're it, similar has a fence been flagged as a need or contemplated the only place uh, I haven't but okay. that's yeah. why we have neighbors here. here. Absolutely, yeah. good. Sure. <laughs> so um, we're gonna come. We're gonna come back to that when we go through. Uh, it, uh, well, maybe you want to say one more thing, and then I'd like to hear from the applicant about um, yeah. some screening. Um, yeah. I, you know, I looking at the plans. Um, I love the the types of vegetation that have been um, recommended by the by the design applicant. Um, perhaps we could um, uh, accomplish two different things here. Um, protect the vegetation from snowfall off the roof um, by potentially sliding the vegetation over in between the two parcels um, allowing a little bit more driveway access more close a little bit closer to the building uh, a little bit farther and, and just be able to use vegetation as screening in between the two properties mm -hmm. um, I, i'm a little reluctant to redesign the project on sly um i, I hear so your, just a recommendation for the designer so i'll let you there you go. <laughs> Delivered. <laughs> Delivered. Um, I want to ask um, Don and Gabriel, has, has a fence to screen the parking or the driveway area been, been contemplated in, in, in service of the um, design and layout of necessary improvement standards? You know, we, ha we haven't talked about it. I, I don't think there's any issue along that where the parking area is. You know, the reality is the subdivision was done with a shared driveway. And so there's, you know, when it was done, it was known there wasn't going to be a ton of privacy in that space. Mm -hmm. So, um, so. But certainly, we can. You know, we'll do the best that we can. To so, if I could counter the. Uh, subdivision uh, uh, prescribed shared access, not a shared drive. Right. So a shared curb cut. Right. So that right. the beginning will be there. There has to be that shared, and then you can split. If there's room, but that does mean that if it starts there, it's not like you can put the house on too far over to the right mm -hmm. sure um but yeah nope that's a that's a good point it is the the, the I would just beginning say, part. The mm -hmm. it would be almost impossible to find anything that does not have the situation like we will, we will 
So what would prevent um, tenants of zero Ewing from driving on my property? Well, part of the problem is your driveway is on um, uh, Gabe's property already. So we have a little bit of an issue that your private driveway is on lot two, portions of it. So we, we maintain all vehicles um, within my property line, um, just simply due to weather and, and erosion and changes to uh, you know water coming in and flooding out the, the driveway a little bit. That's pushed some of the dirt from the driveway onto Gabe's property, uh, but we, we keep all our vehicles on our property completely. Okay. I um, um, uh, you know, it, it may be that the board and or the applicants need to consider some sort of shared driveway slash maintenance agreement at this point. Um, and it's just a thought mm -hmm. since that seems to be an issue right now that's mm -hmm. coming up is the, you know, where the use is. Um, allowed and and other aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know. That's just a thought okay. that's coming to mind. Um, could these driveways could also be better shrink. delineated from they one could another. Yep, they with could be granite curbing or, or sure. other things. Yep, no, the curbing where the curbing would start would need to be run by the Department of Public Works because mm -hmm. there would need it wouldn't be able to be start at the property line. It would need to be set. It definitely wouldn't be able to be in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. um, but there could be granite curbing to, to, to separate the driveways. That would be a possibility with fencing further in. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't want fencing from the very beginning because you run into sight line issues. Sure, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not asking for anything crazy or, or um, burdensome or, or costly. I'm just looking for a little bit of screening and a little bit of definition around the, j the, the shared access. Um, yeah, so what I'd like to point. do is um, hear, hear your last couple points, get through those, um, have a little break so that people can absorb things. Meredith can do a little research, people can stretch, and then um, we'll come back after that. So you've got a couple more items? Sure. Yep. Um, I did want to make a note that um, the tree where the, the uh, building will be um, is a very, very large mature maple, mm -hmm. um, which was not described either in the... Um, the staff notes or the development application. Um, so that, that was left out. Um, so I'd like to make a note it's of that there. It's a 15 there. inch maple, so that's not that large. It's pretty large, it's a big tree. But it does just, go away. I'm just gonna remind people that your comments yeah. are supposed to be directed at the board, not at each other. No, sure, yeah. sure. Thanks, Mary. I do forget that too. Okay, so noted. <laughs> Bear with me just a moment. Um, are there any questions from the board in the interim? Well, well, Dylan's going through his notes. I do have a note here. Um, so uh, three ten. Uh, B, it indicates um, that there will be a low amount of trips for both properties. Um, I wanted to know what, what constitutes low amount of trips. I think it's less than 70 a day or something like that. 3010? Um, yes. Uh, um, usually a, a traffic study is triggered when... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna answer that by guessing. I'm gonna actually look it up. Go ahead, Meredith. Get to it first. <laughs> I think VTRAN standard is 70 trip ends, but that's that's in the peak hour, which it, it is a pretty significant project. A project like this, the transportation, you know, IT manual would say. I just did one about nine and a half trip ends per unit. So, okay. um, I mean, and that's total day, and mm -hmm. it's, I can't remember the number for peak hour because it didn't come up, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty low. Okay. Um, so, our, where we're actually looking at those particular trip standards mm -hmm. 
is subdivision and conditional use. Ah, and so we're not that's using those right, standards. Th so those I, standards I take back that number. Here, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think what it, when the Department of Public Works reviewed this, um, as I was saying, you know, they look at the VTrans standards to take a look themselves as to whether or not some additional, like an additional. Um, turning lane might be required or some other changes to the street to accommodate the amount of traffic right and so adding three units um doesn't in, in their purview doesn't add so much new traffic to that street that you need like a stoplight or a stop sign or a new mm -hmm. turning lane or something to deal with the traffic um and and also you know, doesn't necessarily create a, a traffic jam issue at that access point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas for some places, if you're talking about, you know, an additional 20 units, 40 units, all right, you're going to need a long driveway with room for people to maneuver so that if somebody's coming in, somebody else can still get out. Maybe you need two access points. But with three dwelling units, they didn't feel like that was an issue. I don't have the exact number that they asked what they, what they meant by low but sure does, does that, thank you. that degree of scale make sense yes thank okay. you thank you yeah. um one final uh point here is is um the solar efficiency of of my home mm -hmm. um in the morning you know i rely on a lot of the solar heating from the sun to warm my home mm -hmm. uh, efficiently and I'm, I'm concerned that um a building 35 feet 30 four feet high is going to obstruct that to a degree um, which will be burdensome and costly to me in terms of heating efficiency for my home okay um do do we have the number uh, the distance between the western the western wall of the new building and the eastern wall of of 81 north is that do we know what that distance is relative to the height of the of the buildings because i believe there's a formula there is a formula and I didn't is, see that I it was specified it, I think or the calculated. Do you have that? Um, I don't have that number. So the, the section that it requires that we get the, um, the, the, the standard is that proposed development shall not shade existing yards, walls, or roofs oriented within 15 degrees of truth south on abutting parcels. And so maybe I just misunderstood the standard. Um, so I was, I, I'm not sure. What, what was that last part again? 15 oh, degrees of? True south. <coughs> so south of the parts of the building is behind it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't looking to the distance to the left, but there right. is a standard, um, a way to, m to sh prove that is that show that the building height minus 25 feet and then divided by the distance between the building and the property line equals, hold on. Let me go back so to the we're going to do that during section. the break. We're not yeah. going to do that on the fly. Um, any any final comments, Dylan? I'm all set for now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Walking through it. Yeah. That's what we Just do. Just as a point, the, the buildings are about um, the closest point, which is up in the northwest corner of the proposed building, would be um, about 34 feet from, um, from 81 North Street. Okay. Great. All right. Um, if it pleases the board, um, there you are on the screen. Um, what what I would like to do is take a 10 minute break, give Meredith a chance to do a little bit of research, just enough research to determine if we can resolve this or not tonight. Um, I don't want to spend too, too much time on it. Um, I just want to know if we can take a next step tonight or not. Uh, when we reconvene in 10 minutes, we'll have a better sense of that and can let folks know what what we'll do to conclude this meeting or continue it um my phone is showing 8:59. let's return at 9 10. um we will be back in session at that time thanks see you soon a chance to to stretch to hydrate to do what you needed to do i see some beverages very good very good um well, thank you all for being willing to continue the conversation. Um, I know sometimes this isn't the necessarily a linear process, but we try to make it a comprehensive one. So thanks for being a part of that. Um, what we're going to do is hear from Meredith um, on the issue of the, and, and I, would, I would appreciate for the sake of people who haven't been in on this yet, if you could even just back up and say two years ago, this was two, this, et cetera. 
Um, and so we know what, what we're working with, who is obligated to do what, and what that allows us to decide tonight or not. That's kind of where I'd like to get. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, so uh, back in 2019, the subject parcel, the Zero Ewing Street, was part of a subdivision where it was subdivided off from its neighbor, 81 North Street. Um, and I'm going to actually do a share screen, although I'm also going to read it. Um, and the section 3010 on access and circulation as so part of that decision. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, You're getting I'm there. going to get there. I'm excited. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Um, so the Development Review Board decision on that subdivision under Section 3010, Access and Circulation, um, had some findings. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the site plan shown as a potential development by applicant um, showed a shared access point and two side-by-side -side driveways with each driveway on an individual parcel. That does not mean that that is what has to happen for this proposal, but it is the starting point the applicants went from. Um, and the DRB also found that there was ample, plenty of room on this zero Ewing Street for a driveway. Um, and the analysis was just for a single dwelling unit because that would be the minimum um, um, development, future potential development for the parcel. That doesn't mean that that's all that had to be planned for this parcel. Um, the the big issue was the curb cut, right? Um, so there was a curb cut minimum distance requirement um, as well as the Department of Public Works saying that a total curb cut width for this shared access of what is now 81 North and what we're calling Zero Ewing Street, it couldn't be more than 24 feet in width. Um, this comes from a VTRANS standard that says that the maximum width for residential driveways is 24 feet. Um, so that's as wide as the development, as, as wide as DPW would approve for their construction and access permit. So it doesn't make any sense for zoning to approve something wider if DPW won't approve it because in the project there'd, there'd be a conflict. Um, and we try to avoid those here in Montpelier and make sure that we aren't approving something that a different department won't approve. Um, so the, the, what was discussed was the, the applicant doing the situation where each parcel would have rights to at least 12 feet of the proposed curb cut and the initial section of the driveway, right? Um, that's why in the subdivision approval, we didn't require there be some sort of easement as part of the subdivision approval. Um, there's there, there was no additional plan filed as part of this permit approval. I went down and looked, and unfortunately, it was confusing it with something else. Um, we've had other. I've been here for three years, and that amount of time, I've seen lots. Um, so. What that means is that the the you know the, the applicant in this case for our current application. Sorry, I'm going to scroll down. Mm -hmm. So this this is where the board actually made their final finding on this. Um, they basically said that the board could approve the subdivision because there is a way for each of the parcels, so what's now 81 North Street and Zero Ewing, to each get 12 feet of independently owned access. There's a way to do it. It didn't approve the specific way it was done. That's what our current application has to show, that there's a way to do it um, and that the, the anybody, it, any, any changes being made have to, have to meet that 24 foot curb cut width. Um, and, you know, the, as a, as a shared driveway, if it does become a shared curb cut, there is still the requirement that it meet the 3010B minimum distancing requirements if needed. Um, and I, I think I addressed that in the staff report. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, unfortunately, 
and I, I missed this in the in the application packet, you know, the zero the the current applicants can't narrow the other person's driveway without them signing on to it. So we do have to figure out some way to get that no more than 24 foot width curb cut point and still have 12 feet of driveway for zero ewing. Um, whether that's through an, you know, an easement where there is part of an actual shared driveway or an agreement to narrow, it's... Uh, I, I don't think it's our problem. Findings up above there. Um, the applicant in this case, a little higher. Is that on? Is that on or off? Uh, that that's up to I. Yeah, it's on. Is this on now? It it yes. They're saying it is. Yeah. I I don't control <laughs> the microphone. They do. Could you Just make sure you've got the microphone closed. You could please go up a couple more. Paragraphs. A couple more. Okay. The paragraph number E. E reads, ah, great. the applicant proposes by adding seven feet of curbing on the downhill side of lot one, yeah. uh, the existing curb cut, and infilling with grass behind. So that's what we've represented, even though it's on someone else's land, we represented what the permit had, mm -hmm. you know, the combined permit had. Okay. So all, the, all we're asking is, look to 12 feet on our side of the property line. That's it. Right. Yep. That's all we can control. But we, we then, we fulfilled our obligation of having only 12 feet, and we aren't responsible for any compliance issues on the other lot. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would be back to the meeting minutes, which I actually didn't go all the way through. But yes, I see what that I for, I missed that in looking at the decision. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let the board members chime in for a minute, but you're welcome to stand and stretch your legs and be ready to go. Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Well, I just have your point of one member of the board just let you know that this permit, you know, I can't look it up, refreshing my memory, is actually, you know, it is recorded. That language is recorded in the, in the land records, um, you know, by the owner at the time. Um, and, um, you know, whether there's, like, perfect rights or not for, you know, what's proposed, um, maybe that's the, you know, discussion between the two property owners, but, you know, from a zoning perspective, I think that what is being proposed here is, is quite clear, um, and, um, you know, we recorded the land records before, and, you know, it's going forward, so, I don't know, I, I, I think we kind of beat this, <laughs> beat this point uh, pretty, pretty well. Thanks, Rob. And before you before you chime in, I'm going to turn to see if there are comments from any other board members or questions from any other board members. No, I, I just I, I completely agree with uh, Rob. Okay, nice and close. There. I just just uh, uh, completely agree with Rob in this. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, other board members, did I see Abby unmuted? No. No. <coughs> okay, no, and that was. That is a finding of the decision that applicant proposes. And this is so the decision for the subdivision that originally created the zero viewing lot. So the applicant proposes adding that seven feet of curbing. That's what I was thinking of, but I thought there was a plan that was submitted post decision. And, but that wasn't down there. Okay. Would, would the site plan, the plot, the plot didn't, the include plot this level didn't of need to show this. So it was it something. It didn't need to show the driveway either. The, so the subdivision plat, right? Mm -hmm. The plat only has to show what what was recorded as the final plat shows the boundaries mm -hmm. and right. where existing things are, right? Um, but this is saying that the then current owner of eighty one North, as a con you know, it, this is a finding of what he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm as part of the whole process was adding that seven feet of curbing mm -hmm. and infilling with grass behind the new curbing so that, so that's where that comes the from. Okay. access on 81 North street was going to be 12 feet wide and was going to comply with the agreement. Right. And so that was division. right. That was an, that was a the finding of fact, which means it's something mm -hmm. he said he would do. We didn't have to put it in as a condition per se. Okay. Prior to issuance of the permit. 
thanks for working through this with us. This is a unique situation. Certainly. Um, we are figuring it out. Um, did you have a question or a, a clarification? Yes. Um, so I have a very simple solution that I see is to just not do anything with the curb cut because that would avoid the burdensome uh, in, uh, obstruction of, of access and, and circulation for me. And I see it as a cheaper uh, means of developing this property by not having to cut any curb or do any infill. So I think it could be a win-win. Um, I don't know what the applicant and engineer have to say to that, but... Um, are, are you suggesting something that would be angled onto their property using the existing curb cut so that the wider portion of your driveway could remain? Exactly. Um, when I owned the piece of land, um, I rented it out to somebody who just needed parking mm -hmm. and it was very easy to access just by just by the mm -hmm. flow of driving from Ewing mm -hmm. into the access sure. point and then onto that piece of land it was very easy mm -hmm. um, and I see that as being the most ergonomic uh, way to mm -hmm. allow access and circulation. I, I see what you mean I think that usually in our design standards we try to go perpendicular and not create things that are even if they're ergonomic they're atypical um, we don't want to create non-conformities. Um, what you're talking about would require an easement um, that would have to be agreed to by both parties. And I'm concerned um, that it would not meet the finding of fact that was represented as fact by the seller um, that was from the subdivision. So it would be contrary to what the permit says is supposed to be taking place on those two parcels. It would lead to us issuing a permit for zero ewing that is that does not comport with a previous permit we issued from this body. So I appreciate the brainstorm that, that that's a reflection on it. But if it if it can prevent a burdensome situation. So uh, I'm going to interrupt you there. You've mentioned a burdensome situation. You have four tenants, presumably with four vehicles yep. in your home. Um, what is the burdensome situation? Um, Just uh, is it a multifamily house? Is it a single family home? Because I'm trying to contextualize. It's a single what the family home, and I rent out rooms. Um, mm -hmm. You know where where the proposed uh, infill is mm -hmm. is directly where we would enter and drive onto our drive, um, and so that would make it difficult for for us to get in there from the the western side of, end of Ewing from North Street. Um, and I, you know, I just see it as an added cost, and if 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 this can be uh, negotiated and worked out between the two parties. I don't see why it would be an issue if it can make life easier for everybody. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your thoughts. Um, what's the pleasure of the board at this point? Um, I feel like we need to glance through the staff report and we need to c confirm that we have enough information to make findings on other issues and then we need to make a decision about um, whether go we're going to deliberate this evening or whether we need more information to, to reach a decision. What's the pleasure of the board? I mean, considering the the um, lateness of the hour, as uh, it's, it's now after nine o'clock, which uh, certainly is not the uh, latest that we've uh, we've gone on here. But I, I'm of the I'm of the opinion that it'd be best to uh, deliberate um, and get more information, specific information uh, as to the design, mm -hmm. and not render a decision this evening. Okay. So deliberate means that we will talk but not vote. Correct. That's what I'm. Um, that's that, what I'm proposing. That would require continuing the yes. the hearing to October fourth, um, in order to um, do further research in the zoning office. Um, I think we need to be clear if if we go this route. I think we also need to be clear as to the information we ask from the uh, the applicant. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make sure that we're, you know, we're not just uh, going to find ourselves in a similar situation next time. Yep, yep. And I, I'm not willing to ask the applicant and the neighbors to negotiate on the fly tonight no. or redesign the project. Right. I, just my point, I, I don't think any of this issue about his driveway is germane to this project. Well, it's the, not on our land. Mm -hmm. We showed it graphically. Uh, any changes without going through BBW, mm -hmm. I don't think that's, that's an unreasonable burden to ask us to go back to them. We have their... <coughs> with, you know, which we can, with which we can comply. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's an issue that needs to be decided. I mean, we have a 12 foot driveway, we have access. Uh, it's legal and it's the way BBW would prefer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah I'm not suggesting that uh, you you redesign to comply with something that's external to to your to your lot, um, but you know. So, so let's. Uh, I'm going to ask Kevin as well, and I'd like to hear from others too. What additional? Um, and at this point, the board's going to deliberate. So if you want to have a seat, um, sure. you can do that. Um, what additional information would allow you to make a decision on this issue that well, we do not you know, have tonight? I wonder if Rob would like to chime in. I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you have to have to say, Rob. About the uh, about the driveway issue. Yeah. Or about, uh, well, the whole yeah. the whole thing, the whole project. The whole project. Uh, I mean, I think that the, the only thing hanging for me is that I, I do have some additional questions here on the um, the drainage. Um, that maybe yeah. we'll address tonight, maybe more information. Um, <coughs> Rodent plan, and um, I, I, I think I'm unsure whether those are to be addressed with public works um, or whether those should be you know, presented back to the board. Um, you know, I think I'm torn off in here where, um, you know, we, you know, especially in an instance where we have, you know, an interested neighbor that's concerned about drainage, um, that we just address this issue um, you know, outside of a public, you know, meeting by a condition on, on permit. And mm -hmm. um, so I guess at this point, all I have is a few more questions about the drainage just to see whether a new plan needs to be submitted or they can be, you know, addressed tonight. So that's how I feel. Okay. So maybe we can talk a little bit more about the drainage. I want to get a um, read from other members. What, what additional information do you feel you need there's to... A, there's a, there's Go ahead. other aspects that we haven't really touched on. Um, street was brought up between the two properties. I, I didn't uh, track whether that's something that is need to be required or not, but if, if it is, then we need to be clear about that and I think see it in the next round of drawings. And and then also outdoor lighting. Mm -hmm. We needed information on that from the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I, I think it would be best if we could, in this moment, at this late hour, summarize where we want to have additional information, additional conversation, mm -hmm. and be clear about that with the applicant, with the expectation that we'll come back and to that information to be able to deliberate and vote. Okay. All right. So I heard from Rob there's interest in talking about drainage, which we may be able to do tonight. Abby, you want to understand better the screening requirements as well as outdoor lighting. I would note that early on we talked about outdoor li lighting and it was going to be a, the, the proposal was to have a plan, professionally designed lighting plan submitted as a condition of approval, but it is the board's prerogative to have that plan come before the board to, to be evaluated. Um, other outstanding questions from board members? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Abby. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that was it, Kate. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Catherine. Yeah, I'll add, I don't have um, too many other outstanding questions. This is also my second week, so our second uh, meeting, so still uh, getting a feel of processes, but I would reiterate that it would be helpful in general to have um, more information on the drainage plans. Okay. So Claire or Kevin? Anything else you'd no, like to? No, okay. I all right. Said my Let's, um, Claire, I'm Claire just unmuted. Oh, all right. Claire, you just unmuted. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just kind of going back through the, the stuff report and just kind of scrolling through see kind of all the places where they, where they were kind of the red text, um, looking like around the, um, the slope and the retaining wall. And while it looks like that, is fairly straightforward. I just have a little bit of hesitancy of us like closing the hearing without kind of having that discussion in case there was something that came up around that that mm -hmm. component. Okay. So I don't I don't have anything specific on it, but I would just mm -hmm. hate to see us get to a place where we wish we had gotten some more information on it. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm hearing you say you'd like to be able to walk through the standards for steep slopes in 3007 and just do that process. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, all right, so it is 9.30. Um, I, yes, 
Yes, make please. Sure, can you put the microphone towards you? That way so, the so just with regards to the screening, just whenever we get the report, if you could cite whatever the specific compliance requirements are. Because mm -hmm. I know that they're, you know, and, and we're going to have good relationships with our neighbor. I, I, we will. Um, but just in terms of as we're coming back, what, what needs to be done for the process? Yes, I think that's a fair question. What needs to be done to meet the regulations um, and right. issue the permit? And um, because often in a, pro in a process, there are things that come up that are desirable, but perhaps not required for the permit. And we do need to make a distinction. Yep. Um, that is fair. That is fair. So um, I don't want to rush, and I don't want to drag you into the night. Um, so I'm, I'm walking that, that line here. I think something we can do as a board tonight, if, if there is an appetite, is to dis um, ask additional questions about the screening or I'm sorry, the drainage, and walk through the slope criteria, the steep slopes criteria. We could also do that in a subsequent meeting. Regarding the driveway, I didn't hear anyone identify specific information that they need in order to make a decision about that driveway um, issue, whether, uh, as far as board members are concerned anyway, um, whether it's additional information, if you need to study the subdivision decision, if you need to if you want Meredith to talk with the planning director, um, I'm, I'm not hearing from board members what, what precisely more you want to know about the, the driveway. So I'd love to know more about that. Um, because if we do send, send participants away, we want to know what we're coming back to and what is required. So basically, do any board members need more, more information about the driveway? That was a more direct way of putting it, yes. Yeah, I, I don't, for my point, I don't think I need more information regarding um, the regulation. I, I think this is, it's, it's really on the two home, you know, property owners to determine if there is a solution mm -hmm. and that meets both their needs. And if that, and if they're able to do that, then I would like to see that in the um, an updated drawing. Okay. So you're saying you'd like to see that discussion take place before we make a decision about the permit? Well, I guess what I'm saying is um, if they can reach an agreement, mm -hmm. then they bring it back in an updated drawing. And if they discuss and they can't, then, then let us know that as well. Um, yeah, Gabriel. I, I, I know this probably isn't germane because you're a regulatory body and trying to make sure we're compliant. But do your best. Yeah. Um, we have a I can't here. hear. Can you hear? Don't, 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 don't do that. Let them. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you're talking right into the microphone. Can you hear me? Whether, which is on and which is off. Well, you shouldn't. Have, it, it should have been on the whole time. Just it was speak, all set up before. Speak close. Yeah. Just can speak you hear close. Me now? Is it going through? No. Oh. No. Okay, oh, so talking. he turned it off. Okay, um, so to the switch again. Okay. So can you hear me now? Yes. And again, it may not be germane to your your situation, but just we may or may not agree on every single piece of this. Sure. Uh, but there are a number of tradespeople in the area that have this scheduled to be yeah. doing work this fall and into the winter, yeah. and so. If we don't get it approved by the next, we probably won't be doing it until the spring. So just, just know there are folks that have this scheduled in mm -hmm. to their mm -hmm. process. And if we are in compliance with the regulations, mm -hmm. it would be good to have an approval. Yeah. Thank you. I don't, I am always glad to hear about the real world implications of what we're doing. Um, that, that's fair, even if we don't have a standard here in the book that says tradespeople, yes or no. Um, thank you for mentioning it. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if it would be helpful to the board to have me take the prior subdivision decision and that clause about the then owner of 81 North Street narrowing the access point on his side and take that to the city attorneys. And if an opinion from that uh, on that and how binding that is on subsequent property owners would be to the board if that would be helpful or not. I think it could save time in the long run. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, then we're, then we're uh, setting uh, a pretty hard uh, uh, 
process. Yeah. 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 All right. So Meredith, I would appreciate that. So board and others involved, we have the option to talk more about drainage <coughs> and slope or given that we're going to continue the hearing so long as it passes by motion, um, we could talk about those things another evening when um, another evening. It's it's I'd, I'd like to defer if there's any chance that Rob could identify his concerns. If we can't answer them now or maybe we don't even need to answer them now. But mm -hmm. if we understand them, then we either know we can answer them. And we don't I don't want to lose ground. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. So, Rob, if, if you could um, talk about your drainage concerns and then I'll have um, Ka Catherine can ask any follow on questions. Um, uh, that relate to drainage. So um, we, we've heard about the, we've heard about the way the water will flow toward the back of the property, and then it will be <coughs> drained toward a catchment on Ewing Street. We've heard concerns about the role that this piece of land currently plays at the bottom of Ewing Street, and how that supports 81 North Street as well as 80. Um, I'm sorry, Bethany's property. I don't have the number handy. Um, and we want to understand so, so that that that's what we've heard so far is um, we've heard about how the water on the site will be taken care of as well as feedback from neighbors about the role that the site plays in the overall um, hydrology so with that as a setup Ro Rob could you yeah, yeah thanks um, so could someone over up the, um, the road in the EPSC plan um, from the application That's it. Okay. So starting at the uh, starting at Ewing Street, you know, going down the driveway, um, you know, obviously it's quite flat. And, um, you're not proposing to change the grade much. Um, you you know you go halfway down the driveway and you have a three percent um, with an arrow flowing towards Ewing Street. Um, and so I, I just I'm confused as to what. Is that what what's that representing in slope? Is that the drain or is that the, the slope of the driveway or what? It's the slope there? slope of the driveway. This driveway is a three percent slope going out towards Ewan Street. Yes. Okay. So okay. so the water so basically, so there's a point in the driveway that's draining to the back of the lot versus out towards Ewing Street, somewhere in there, right? Actually, no, it, the, yeah, there'll be a slight rise maybe, but I mean, the, the rim at the catch basin in the very rear is 568, and the, the uh, contour at the front of the building is 566, and then we're at, it's then, basically flat out to the street. Um, sorry, can I chime in with something that I think will help? Yeah. Um, that catch basin though in the corner is also to gather stuff that's coming from the, sorry, east, right, Don? Because you've got the 568.5 here at the end of the turnaround and the 568.3 low point in yeah. that parking barrier. So it's it's sloping east to west as well as south to north Correct. right and so that's one reason you've got that catch basin in that corner to catch that stuff and i think that was one of dpw's questions as well is to see exactly how that was graded there in the corner to make sure it actually caught the stuff coming from the east well it's going downhill yeah i i know <laughs> <laughs> and it might be just you and know clarifying that for dpw and the other thing dpw wanted us to get the the front catch basin out of there right away. Yeah. Which we can do easily. Mm -hmm. Yep. So move that all the way back behind this that line. Yeah. One piece I'm of information. I'm going to stick with the board questions okay, for sorry. the moment. Thank you. Um, right, so, so sorry. I'm going to stop share so we can see people. Yeah. Um, so go ahead, Rob. Uh, I mean, I just was three percent seems like a pretty you know for a pretty steep slope over you know what three percent is a Three feet over a hundred feet. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So that's a three, three feet from the back from the 
from one the south end of the driveway to the north end of the driveway? So it'd be, it would be one foot though, right? Because if the driveway is 34 odd feet, yeah. you divide it all by three. No, the driveway is uh, 50, 60, 70. Oh. It's almost, it's probably 90 feet long. Okay, thank you. It's, it's only a two and a half grade at the at the road is five sixty six grade at the back is five sixty eight so we're only two and a half two feet from one end to the other oh I guess I see I see how you're I see that how you're filling in yeah it naturally slopes down there now and you're filling in all the way up to the front of the building I see that now okay that's that's what I needed <laughs> There, um, there is a very so steep slope at the front of the lot. Oh, well, let, let's get to that in just a second, please. Yeah. So my last, I mean, my last concern is, is how, um, you know, maybe this is less of a, you know, less of a concern, but just it seems like with a gravel, with a gravel driveway, um, you know, in the base of the wall there, like over time, there's going to need to be some maintenance for, you know, sort of like excavating out the litter and, you know, um, extra sediment or whatnot that is going to end up like at the bottom of that wall slowly raising that elevation you know over 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 time um and so maybe that maintenance is you know something that's just okay to have but um mm -hmm. it just seems like a, a concern there that eventually you're going to have a sort of a collection point of sediment and debris um down down there Hi. no no disagreement Thanks, Rob. I'm going to um, very brief comment from Dylan and then um, give Catherine a chance to follow on questions about drainage. You're remarking on the slope between the Ewing Street and the, and the parcel. Yes, uh, thanks, Kate. Um, so immediate running parallel with, with Ewing Street, you know, Ewing Street starts to slope up very steeply, very uh, quickly. Um, moving from Ewing Street from the front to the back of the lot, so from north to south, mm -hmm. um, immediately in front of that, the Ewing Street is a very steep slope mm -hmm. um, between three and, I think probably three and five feet. Um, or pr and it gets steeper going, going mm -hmm. up the street, um, gets taller, the slope there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that might cause um, additional yeah. issues there. Okay, um, well we just heard and saw in this report that at, at the street, at the, f at the I don't know if it's the right of way. It's 568, and then toward closer toward the front of the building, it's two feet. So we're talking about a two foot grade, at least on the western side, or it, a it two foot drop, at least on the western side of the property. It's almost like a, a bowl shape. Okay. So there is that dip that creates what? Okay. Okay. Right, thanks. Um, Catherine, um, if you're still, if you're, if you're available, um, did you want to have some follow on questions? Any follow on questions about the drainage? Yeah. I'm here. I'm a, I don't need any additional questions at this okay. point. All right, thanks. And you are allowed to be off camera. I didn't mean to pick on you there. Thank you. Sorry, I've got allergies, so I'm turning off the camera. Oh, gosh. We understand. We understand. Okay, great. So I think that covers drainage. Are there any further questions from board members about drainage? No. <coughs> I see nothing. Okay. Um, I guess, the, I mean, that last point is that, you know, you know, drainage or screening or whatever, there's the, sort of the section of the driveway from the, you know, end of the uh well north street parcel driveway to the retaining wall um uh, which you know maybe would be further conversation about you know screening there but mm -hmm. um you know i think you know potentially some curving or <laughs> you know or something mm -hmm. uh you know something there to prevent as if there were to be you know pooling or you know poor maintenance or something like that down in you know the, uh, against that wall mm -hmm. um, or that storm drain filling up so that the water does not you know end up going on the neighboring property mm -hmm. um, i think is maybe a consideration to, to make but i don't have a specific solution so okay. just something to keep in mind all right based on what we've heard about the description of the slope that it slopes west to east as well as south to north east to west okay. east to west oh, that makes more sense because that's it's downhill yeah east to west and south to north okay all right thanks never mind Okay, I see what you mean, but the catchment, or the catch basin. So, catch basin. so, so something to prevent water from from pooling at the catch basin and overflowing in towards eighty one North Street. Is that what you're talking about, Rob? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, I just 
see that in 10 years, that could be an issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, given the outstanding questions on the driveway, I'm not prepared to talk about granite curbing or anything like that. I think that needs to be a little further down the road. Um, all right, board members. Um, the other outstanding thing that I think could be dealt with tonight is going through the slope criteria. What's the pleasure of the board? And um, you know, to Don's earlier point, if there are outstanding questions, you'd like to be able, have the opportunity to figure them out between now and next time. Um, Claire, um, I think you mentioned about slopes. Shall we? Are there specific questions you have uh, amongst the slopes criteria, or were you just wanting to make sure we do a, a um, adequate re review of those? Yeah, I think, um, it's, and I guess I want to clarify kind of one of the reasons, or the reason this came to the DRB was because of the slope right. component. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would be, I think it would be helpful for us just to kind of go through that as that's kind of what I see as kind of one of our main tasks. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as a side note, I just wanted to um, make a, a note that um, on the staff report on page three, which I think is different from the page numbering of the packet. Mm -hmm. um, just the procedural status on number four. Mm -hmm. I think this needs to be um, corrected or revised. Sorry. <laughs> You're right. I don't, you, I don't know if you kind of use this as the basis, you know, of the decision, but I just thought that would be a, a point of note. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just think it would be kind of for us to do our, our due diligence on, on prime reason it came to us was to go through mm -hmm. um, these items. Um, nothing particular sticks out okay. to me, but um, I don't know if, if, if Meredith is, or Kate, you want to just kind of walk us through kind of the areas that were highlighted yeah. um, by staff on this. Area. Sure, I, I would like to do that. I'll, I will I will beg your indulgence for another 10 or 15 minutes to do this so that if there is anything outstanding, it is known. Staff report suggests that it, there may not be. So um, this is going to be a, a board a board discussion um, about this. So um, we will walk through them. We're looking at page six of the staff report. And um, 3007 is what we look at when land over 30% of slope will be disturbed. And um, we, there are design standards that we need to ensure are met when it comes to the disturbance of this land. And as we were talking about earlier, we, we talked about the, the magnitude of disturbance over 30% being in the neighborhood of 1,100 square feet of disturbance, and you've seen the diagram. So with that in mind, let's go. The, I'm just going to read them. Um, the development must be designed to limit the amount of disturbance clearing of existing natural vegetation and impervious surface in order to minimize potential for erosion, stormwater runoff, flooding, and water quality impairment. So we have heard about the addition of, um, so we're talking about the development on the slope, not the site as a whole. Right. In the That's right. Yeah, the development right. on, okay. the on the slopes that triggers 3007. Thank you. Thank you. So um, minimal, na minimal existing natural vegetation other than grass is disturbed. Um, by the project, but on, on the slopey part itself. Um, could you describe the disturbance of vegetation on the slope area? The, uh, if you look at the site plan where it or either plan that shows the um, existing tree line, mm -hmm. you'll see that, and uh, we talked about before, that the uh, easternmost parking space has, and the wall associated with it, uh, bumps into that area. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, as we said, there'll be some disturbance behind the wall to build a wall. Mm -hmm. But, um, and all of that is within the greater than 30%. Okay. But um, we we have an erosion control plan. It's, I think it's a, well, the only way to have parking is to, is to do it there, mm -hmm. short of trying to put parking underneath the building, which would put the building 12 feet higher and cause all sorts of other issues. Um, we think it's not unreasonable. To, well, we think that the amount of disturbance and uh, performed in accordance with the erosion control plan will not have an adverse impact on water quality, public health, uh, or the environment. Thank you. And it is a relatively limited amount of disturbance at 1,100 odd square feet. Okay. Um, 
let's just go through them. Board members, I'm going to count on you to chime in if there's something specific you want to know more about. I'm not going to ask each time. Um, preserve distinctive natural features, the general topography of the site, and the existing natural vegetation. This appears to be the case. Maintain or reduce the pre-existing <coughs> rate and retain the pattern of stormwater runoff leaving the property. Again, this pertains to the 30% disturbance. Um, the answers here pertain to the whole site, but it's yeah, context, it's, it's so context. that's good. Yeah. Um, so the stormwater runoff leaving the property overland should be reduced overall. So that suggests that this disturbance of 30% or more does not cause undue uh, cause issues with stormwater living the property. Produce a final grade that is compatible with the surrounding natural terrain and with the addition of the walls and kind of a, a stepwise way as opposed to terracing or a big big tall wall. It appears to do that. Create a harmonious transition between graded slopes and the natural terrain. Avoid creating continuous unbroken slopes or linear slopes. Contour graded slopes by varying the slope increment to produce a final grade that undulates both vertically and horizontally. Vary cut and fill banks and terraces to produce a final grade that has visual interest and allows for naturalistic landscaping. Consider the use of retaining walls and terracing rather than cut and fill banks. Considered. Vary the pad elevations on sites. Irrelevant, there's only one structure. Provide roads and drives that follow existing count contours, it does. Use a compact building forms that are multi-story buildings to minimize building footprint. Structure is multi-story, compact footprint. Use split or multi-level building forms to step up or down the slope. It's not relevant in this in this uh, in this condition or in this um, scenario. So I um, I went through that quickly, but I wanted to read them specifically so that we know the the detail that we're looking at as we talk about this 1,100 feet of disturbance. So I'll pause there for board members to comment yay nay question other another way i'll ask that is do folks need any additional information to determine that this section of the zoning bylaw has been adhered to i have a quick question on the detail there was a fence that was on top of the retaining wall does th is there going to be a fence on top of the retaining wall Yes, it would be probably a black metal uh, rail fence that, that that's a safety requirement. If you have anything over 30 inches, you really need to keep people from falling over the wall. So the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And is that included in the eight and a quarter feet or is that additional? No, that would be an addition to that. Oh, okay. I missed that. Thank you, Claire. And typically it's uh, 36 to 42 inches would be the. And the other thing I just wanted, if I may, um, is that uh, one alternative with this would be to do a large cut and fill on that bank and, in, and we could meet the criteria and have gentle slopes, but it would be a significant increase in disturbance in the 30% slopes, um, but it would be a lot cheaper than, than doing the wall. So I think we've tried to minimize the disturbance at some cost to the applicant. Thank you for noting and that. I realize cost isn't a factor, but it, it is re in reality. We're, we're, we've agreed to talk about pragmatism <laughs> and reality. We've agreed to talk about reality this evening, which is a good thing. Um, I, I have a quick question there. Did you say that it would be, it would be cheaper to remove more and not do the wall? Yes, significantly. And so the, the wall is the recommendation or the direction in which the zoning kind of leads applicants due to the trade-off of remove less. Yes, exactly. And, a wall. and, and it's, as Kate had said, it's specifically mentioned as retaining walls as being one of the options. So yeah, the ordinance uh, directs you that direction toward that option. Interesting. I mean, I guess, I mean, aesthetically, I think that area would look better without a wall. <laughs> um, I agree. But, but I guess I was just trying to understand kind of, right, the direction of it, because I'm thinking, like, that's going to be like an eight-foot wall 
right? Like an eight, eight, more than an eight foot wall with a fence on top of it. And, and thinking about kind of what looks more natural, what might potentially, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a hydrologist of, of you know, what that does for, for stormwater runoff, but, um, and, and maybe this is a topic to kind of put out there kind of in consideration aside from our discussion this evening, but um, just aesthetically, I, I feel like a more naturalistic look would be a, more of a, a, a vegetated grade than a solid construction of like an eight foot wall. Thanks, Claire. Um, I think I think our job is mostly to evaluate what's before us. Um, but I, I I hear your feedback as well, and um, it's good that this has come up. Um, I want to clarify. I don't think the board is asking the applicant to redesign. No. 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 It's well, not our job. No. Okay. That yeah. <coughs> and and I mean it's it's a discussion that if the board wanted to have it a little bit more during the continued hearing about their thoughts on the policy choices that the Planning Commission made mm -hmm. and the City Council in adopting these regs that might be something to discuss at some point um, but the there's definitely a preference in section 3007 to reduce the area of disturbance on steep slopes okay. that that is that is a the way as done said the way the regulations point applicants mm -hmm. well the good news is the regulations were rewritten in the last couple of years to allow right. for <laughs> development in 30 percent slopes so it, it at least it's better now than it was in january right. of 2018 yeah, <laughs> that, so. that first edition was uh <laughs> it's not going to work um so listen folks um we've had some good conversation there's been some hard work done tonight um with a lot of important questions raised which i really appreciate um i feel like having gone through now the drainage and the slope we have daylighted what needs to be daylighted on those areas so they won't be looming for next time i think we still need to talk more about the exact requirements as they pertain to screening um and i'm not just talking about landscaping but screening for example of the parking area and we need some um, legal counsel on the applicability of the finding in the subdivision permit for these parcels um, before we can say with the confidence we want to say um, that, that we can approve the proposal. So I believe that is where we find ourselves. Um, I would entertain a motion to continue this hearing to October 4th. Is, is I'll, there a motion? I'll make that motion to continue this uh, public hearing uh, until October 4th. Okay. Is there a motion by Kevin? Is there a second? Second. Second by Rob. I'm going to call the roll. Abby? Yes. Claire? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Rob? Yes. And I vote yes. Yeah. Um, so we have continued this hearing to two weeks from this evening, um, same, same time, same place. Um, and I thank you all very much um, for going through yep. this and working through this because it is work. Um, and I um, look forward to continuing the conversation. And I will be in the office tomorrow. And Meredith will be <laughs> in the office tomorrow. Yeah. And it looks like, well, a, uh, it looks like a very interesting I development. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. great. So, I've lost my agenda. I have a feeling toward the end of it. Oh. Um, the the um, other business, only other business is that our next meeting is October 4th, 2021, pending DRB input. You've got the DRB input. We're going to meet. We're going to meet. This will be the only matter. Yeah, this will be the this only matter. This will be it? Okay. Uh, we have a question. Kate, mm -hmm. this was going to be your last meeting. I'm going to continue um, oh. for another meeting or two. Um, I want to serve this board and see it through to a really good stopping point, um, considering that's how long we've th been continuing. Th that's a very, it. very generous uh, <laughs> you. thing that you're doing, <laughs> Kate. Kate. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Um, okay, I just wanted um, to check since yeah, we're continuing a hearing that you've been tearing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'd okay. like to, I'd like yeah, to might, help out with uh, this one. I was getting a little nervous because I might actually be out of town <laughs> okay. that week. Yeah, no, I'll, okay. definitely, I'll definitely be here. And okay. then we'll. Great. I, I would ask you each to. Find one lucky person who you could invite to apply to be on the DRB and join the fun. Um, we're looking for, for good people. So um, 
Listen, Kate, everybody I know has served on this board already. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're hanging out with the right people. <laughs> um, all right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Rob. Is there a second? Second. Second from Abby. Um, I'll call the roll. Abby? Yes. Claire? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Rob? Yes. And I vote yes as well. We are adjourned. Thank you all very, very much.